can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 1401, the tickets get sold like crazy. What was this? This was a face smacking. John Yi could always come up with something unexpected. Today and at this moment, this scene repeated itself once again. At first, it was still all right. The concert tickets for the three Japanese and Korean big names were priced much higher than before, but compared to the current price levels, it was not too unacceptable. Everyone just made a few remarks about it on the internet. But when the tickets prices for Zhong Yi's Crawlstalk tour were announced, it immediately flipped things on its head and left the staff of the three Japanese and Korean celebrity teams in a predicament. They had been placed right in the line of fire. Nothing stands up well to comparison. With this, there was an immediate wave of scolding across the country. It's priced so low? What the hell? This is too cheap. That's right. When we eat out with our family and friends these days, the bill comes up to at least 5 or 600 yuan. But his lowest tier seating is only going for 288 renminbi. That's not even enough for one meal. What's more, this is Zhong Yi we're talking about. A Chinese heavenly king. An Asian A-list celebrity. He's too kind. Zhong Yi still has the best character. That's right, these ticket prices were priced with a conscience. Supporting Zhong Yi. Teacher Zhong is so honorable. Who said that Zhong Yi's ticket pricing would definitely be higher? Who said it? How face smacking. Ha 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 ha. At first, I thought I wouldn't have the money to buy Zhong Yi's tickets. But now, it looks like I can even afford the middle tier seats. Damn, I definitely have to go support Lord Zhong and Lord Yao. I like their crawlstalk so much, and the ticket prices are so cheap as well. Why would anyone in their right mind buy the tickets to those Japanese and Korean celebrities' concerts? Those foreigners. They're only here to make a quick buck. That's right. By selling their tickets at such a high price, are they taking us for fools? They're just taking advantage of the fact that the Chinese people have money for them to earn. What kind of status does Zhong Yi have? Do they know how popular Teacher Zhong is in our country? Even Teacher Zhong's tickets aren't priced so expensively, so who do they think they are? This is the first time that Park Jaesang will be holding a concert in China, so what if it's a tad more expensive? Previous poster, you must be joking, right? You're putting it like this is not Lord Zhong's first time holding a special crawlstalk. Furthermore, Zhong Yi will be performing three consecutive days of shows. It's going to be a tour. Unlike those Japanese and Korean celebrities who come over to earn our money before running away. Zhong Yi has handled this beautifully. Poor people like us will also get a chance to go watch his crawlstalk live. Cursing. Arguments. The situation online blew up. At Zhong Xia's house. Mom, this, that little Zhong, how awful of him. Put, teacher Zhong is too ruthless. At Chen Guang and Fan Wenli's home. I'm cracking up. Teacher Zhong is really good at stirring things up. He's just messing around. At Zhong Yuanchi's studio. Sister Zhong, Zhong Yi has really made a move. I've seen it already. Do you think the three of them can outdo Zhong Yi? They can't even hold Zhong Yi down in their own territory, much less here in China. At Central TV. Zhong Yi has taken a stab at them. What a ruthless swipe this is. Hi, tell me, why did they have to provoke him? The media was amused. The industry insiders were amused. However, the three celebrity teams from Japan and Korea were not amused at all. They were all cursing at this in unison. This kind of public pressure made them very uncomfortable. What the hell is he thinking? Why is he selling his tickets so cheaply? Isn't he looking to earn money? Everyone was selling at a high price without any issues, but you're selling yours at such a low price. What is the meaning of this? Are you trying to ruin the market? He's deliberately messing with us. This is so infuriating. What a bastard. He's trying to put on a show of strength. That goddamn Zhong Yi. Should we lower our ticket prices? We can't lower them anymore. The ticket prices have already been submitted, and there's no way we can lower it either. 
our publicity costs are too high. If the ticket prices are too low, we won't be able to recoup our expenses. At the end of the day, we still have to make some money out of this. Don't worry, this won't hurt us one bit. Right, even if our tickets are highly priced, it's not like we won't be able to sell them off. Besides, we still have to delay releasing the VIP tickets for now. And the other tickets too, we can't just release everything in one go. Understood, that's basic hunger marketing one, after all. Yeah, Chinese people always fall for such tricks. That's right. Sometimes, the more expensive it is, the more likely they will buy it. Let them scold all they want. We have a lot of fans in China anyway, so there will always be someone who will buy it. Right at the beginning, Zhong Yi had made a fool of them. For now, they could only brace themselves and stick to the plan. What other way was there? It was already too late to turn back. That same night. Park Jaesang's concert. Kim Ji Chan's concert. Kozuyo Kimura's concert. And John Yi's Crawstalk tour. At 10 pm, the tickets for all the events would go on sale. The media was also unanimously siding with John Yi when the ticketing sales channels open, who will emerge as the winner. John Yi's ticket price is labeled as honest. John Yi's tickets for Crawstalk tour sets market price. Tickets to the Japanese and Korean celebrities' concerts are overly expensive. Who will buy such expensive tickets? With five minutes to go, many netizens were standing by to buy the tickets. Some were holding their cell phones, and some were keeping watch on their computers. Nobody blinked as they waited for the time to arrive. It's starting soon. On your marks, everyone. Someone, help me snatch a ticket for John Yi's crawstalk. Supporting John Yi. Boycotting all high ticket prices. Hightail it back to Japan and Korea. This is not a place for you all to make a quick buck. I want tickets to Park Jaesang's concert. Why do you still want them when they're so expensive? I'll still buy them anyhow. The reason why this group of foreigners dare to behave so audaciously in China is because of people like you. So what? I like Kim Ji Chan and I'm willing to give him my money. What's wrong with that? Everyone was quarreling over the buying of the tickets. Three. Two. One. The sales began. Snatch the tickets. It's mine. They're all mine. John Yi, John Yi. I'm here. Don't snatch from me. Damn, why are they all gone? Heavens, why are there already no tickets left? They've all been sold out. Heck. 13 seconds. It had only been 13 seconds since the tickets went on sale. Everyone who came to purchase the tickets were shocked to discover that Zhong Yi's tickets to his Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen shows, be it the 288 renminbi, 388 renminbi, 588 renminbi, or 888 renminbi tickets, were all sold out. In the blink of an eye, all of them had been snapped up, as for the other three Japanese and Korean celebrities' concert tickets, the tickets weren't even fully released for sale yet. At most, they only opened around half of the seating for sale. However, the tickets were still selling and there were no signs of them being sold out. In fact, they were even far from being sold out. From the looks of it, it might be possible that they could still be bought the next morning. The public was stunned. The nation was stunned. 13 seconds. Three shows. There had never been such a crazy sales result before. Moreover, it had to be known that no tickets were held back from the sales channel for Zhong Yi's shows. All of them released to the public for sale. And they were sold out? Even selling out in only a matter of seconds? Everyone was shocked. How scary. Zhong Yi is amazing. There's really no hecking others who are as popular as him. Even if the tickets were sold cheaply, they shouldn't have been sold out this quickly. 13 seconds? Three shows? Tens of thousands of seats? Not even John Yuench's tickets are so coveted. They've all gone mad. Mad, I tell you. My ticket. I was so close. I was just a second away from getting one. Hi, John Yi is indeed John Yi. I'm crying. I should have known there was no chance of getting a ticket. 
the three Japanese and Korean big names were stunned. How is that possible? Isn't this too fast? What about us? We only sold a sixth of our tickets. The industry was also in an uproar. 13 seconds. This was a new record. An unprecedented record. Only now did they realize that even though Zhong Yi had only recently been promoted to the Chinese S-list rankings, and ascended to the top of the Chinese entertainment industry, his popularity, influence, appeal, and all other aspects were already on par with the other six heavenly kings and queens in China. Just taking this record of selling out his tickets in 13 seconds, no one else should be able to break it for a long time to come. Zhong Yuanqi? Xu Mai Lan? Or someone else? From the looks of it, it would be difficult to say who would win if the veteran heavenly kings and queens came face to face with Zhong Yi. Chapter 1402, Zhong Yi makes yet another move. The next day. There were countless news reports. Zhong Yi's tour tickets highly sought after. Ticketing website gets crippled by traffic. The Japanese and Korean celebrities' concerts receive the cold shoulder. Zhong Yi's appeal is still as charming as ever. A lot of people who launched the ticketing website in the morning discovered that the tickets for the three concerts in China were still not sold out yet. The lowest tier tickets priced at 1,000 renminbi had already been sold out, but there were still remaining tickets for the middle tier and premium seats. As for the VIP tickets, although the price was clearly shown on the website, they remained unreleased for sale. One event's tickets were snapped up within 13 seconds. The other three still had tickets on sale even after the next day had arrived. The contrast was too glaring. Zhong Yi had crushingly defeated those three Japanese and Korean celebrities. Previously, some fanatical fans of Kim Ji-chan and Park Jae-sang said that the popularity of their operas was not something that Zhong Yi could match. The two operas both ranked slightly higher than Zhong Yi on the Asian Celebrity Rankings Index, so how could they not be a match for him? However, once the tickets went on sale, many people were dumbfounded by the results. No one would know if they did not try. But the moment they did, they got a shock. Be it Kim Ji-chan, Park Jae-sang, or Kimura Kozuyo, none of them were even close to Zhong Yi when it came to their popularity in China. They were simply not on the same level. The three Japanese and Korean celebrity teams. It's all right. Our tickets are actually selling quite well too. We should be able to sell them out by today. After that, we can release the second batch of tickets. Yeah, don't be in a rush to push out the VIP tickets first. Right, just ignore them. We'll do it accordingly to our own pace. In the end, it will still depend on reputation. Only when the concert begins will we be able to compete based on our strengths. It's still a little early to say now who has won or who has lost. That's right, it doesn't matter how it is right now. When the actual day of the performance comes, that is when the real battle begins. Let John Yi do what he wants. I don't believe that he would be able to beat us at selling the tickets. If they want to sell it cheaply, just do it. We will still be able to sell ours even at this high price. Their fans also showed them a lot of support. Sisters, let's do it. We cannot disappoint our oppers. Why are the tickets still not sold out yet? I'll buy one. I'll buy one too even if I have to starve. It's just 2,000 renminbi, right? A middle tier seat? I bought it. Right, we can't let Zhong Yi steal the limelight from the oppers. Supporting Kimura. Supporting Jaysang Opera. So what if it's expensive? I'll buy one no matter how expensive it is. That's right, we'll buy them. Many of the fans were screaming in excitement. The importance of the Japanese and Korean celebrities' fan bases in China was definitely not to be underestimated. At the studio, Zhong Yi was on the phone with the ticketing agent. Teacher Zhong, the tickets have all been sold out, but the profits, isn't it good enough that our shows have been sold out? We can just make less money. But that's not the point. Even if you had priced the lowest tier tickets at 1,500 renminbi, there would still be people fighting over it. Old Lu, tickets to the show that I put on have always, and will always, be cheap. This might be our first time working together, but we already agreed on this matter beforehand. Well, all right then, we'll do as you say. 
At most, I'll give you a bit more of my share of the profit. There's no need to, that won't do. We'll just divide it according to our agreement. It's fine, I can't let you guys work for nothing. Hi, Teacher Jong, I have nothing else to say other than that you're the most honest celebrity I've worked with in all my years. Based on what you've just said, even if there's no money to be earned in the future, I'll still get your affairs handled for you. Thank you, old Liu. Honest? He was not honest at all. The crucial point was that he didn't actually have much interest in making money. Would making money be more enjoyable than smacking faces? No. Such happiness was something that not even money could buy. He would do it even if it meant losing money. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others came over. Zhong Zui laughed and said, Director Zhong, this move of yours is superb. Ha Chichi was also tickled. Everyone is scolding them and saying that we're honest. Zhong Zui said, their ticket prices are really a little too expensive. This time, they've caused their own downfall. It'll be enough to cause them a headache for a while. This is what you call starting off on the wrong foot. But Zhong Yi said, it's still not enough. Zhong Zui exclaimed, still not enough? Zhong Yi said calmly, old Ha, help me get something done. Ha Chichi was startled. Please speak. Zhong Yi asked, are the most expensive tickets for the three concerts released yet? Not yet. Ha Chichi said, but they've actually started selling them already. It's just that they are priced really, really expensively. Even though they are marked at around 10,000 renminbi each, the ticketing agent is deliberately holding onto the tickets in order to raise the prices. In the end, the scalpers start selling them at prices several times more expensive than the original prices. Everyone in the industry knows that this is actually the ticketing agent's own personnel selling them on the black market to make more profits. From the looks of it, the celebrities are probably also getting a share of the money. By the way, why are you asking about this? Zhong Yi said, ask how much they are going for. I want to buy some. Ha Chichi was stunned. Ah? Zhong Zhuo was also dumbfounded. Why would you buy their tickets? Zhong Yi said, just ask them like I told you to. All right. Ha Chichi immediately went to make a call. Eventually, they managed to find out the most up-to-date news. Kimura Kozuyo's VIP concert tickets had been pumped up to 20,000 renminbi and was a negotiable price. Kim Jichan's VIP concert tickets were at 19,999 renminbi and non-negotiable. Park Jaesang's VIP concert tickets were the most expensive ones of all, going at a fixed price of 35,000 renminbi each. Ha Chichi said with a gasp, they're all crazy. They've gone mad from wanting to make money so badly. These people are really too keen on making a quick buck. Jongs were also said angrily. Aren't they trying to scam the fools? One has to be crazy to spend so much money on buying a ticket like this. Do they really think that our Chinese people's money is so easy to earn? But the next second, Zhong Yi said something very shocking. Old Ha, I'll hand you a few of my bank cards. Go buy as many of their VIP tickets as you can for me. I'll pay for them out of my own pocket. Ha Chichi was dumbfounded. Are you crazy? Jongs were also very nearly fell over. What are you trying to do? You want to buy them even when it's so expensive? Do you have relatives who wish to go watch their concerts? Zhong Yi placed his bank cards onto the table. Don't ask so much for now. Can we buy any? Ha Chichi said, if it's at the black market price, I can definitely buy them. All right, Zhong Yi said, get this done immediately. Ha Chichi did not know whether to laugh or cry. All right then. One ticket. Five tickets. Ten tickets. In the end, they managed to get 17 VIP tickets across the three concerts, and it cost Zhong Yi less than 500,000 renminbi to buy them. Several of the tickets were even bought from scalpers in Japan and Korea who demanded an exorbitant price, after having initially agreed on a sum. As such, they overspent by quite a bit as well. This left Ha Chichi rather infuriated as she gained a new understanding of these Japanese and Korean celebrities once more. To make a quick buck, they were willing to resort to all kinds of means. Ha Chichi and the others couldn't figure out why director Jong would want to buy such expensive tickets, though. 
however, they discovered that Zhong Yi did not even blink at the sight of this amount. Less than 500,000 renminbi? Like this bit of money mattered to him. After obtaining the tickets, Zhong Yi's next word scared the hell out of Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and all of the other studio staff. Zhong Yi lightly said, put these VIP tickets up for sale at 500,000 renminbi each. Ha Chichi nearly spat blood. Zhongs were nearly fainted. 500,000 renminbi? For one ticket. Heck! All of these tickets together didn't even cost 500,000 renminbi when they bought them. Chapter 1403, Your Sister. The studio staff were all exclaiming in horror. Director Zhong, 500, 500, 000, 000, 000 RMB? Yeah. Isn't that too unethical? Oh, is that unethical? It seems a little unethical. Then that's right, unethical is precisely what I'm after. Zhong Yi could still remember the farce that happened to Fei Wong's concert. Even a heavenly queen from his previous world could not handle something like that, let alone the parties involved this time. Just like how Zhong Yi himself had claimed, he might not know how to flatter other people, but step on them. This fella had too many destructive tricks up his sleeve. The Chinese people's money was easy to earn? Treating the Chinese people as fools? The higher the ticket prices, the more important it made you all look. The greater your standing? All right then, as you wish, I will add more fuel to your fire. Aren't you people going the way of selling your tickets expensively? Would 100,000 renminbi be expensive enough? Would 200,000 renminbi be expensive enough? Would 500,000 renminbi be expensive enough? The three Japanese and Korean celebrity teams. At this moment, there was exhilaration all around. They've been sold out. The first round of tickets that were released have been sold out. Many of the VIP seats have been sold as well. Really? The ticketing agent just let us know a moment ago. Quite a few tickets costing 30,000 renminbi were actually sold. Ha 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 ha, there are really suckers like that. Let's pump the prices up further. All right, let's do it. It will be such a waste not to earn this money. I think it will still sell even if we doubled the prices another time. Our VIP tickets are only valued at around 10,000 renminbi each, but they can be flipped for up to three or four times that amount. No one will be able to link it to us anyway. That's right, there's still a market for it. There are still people who can accept such prices. There are so many whales among the Chinese fans. Yeah. Why else has everyone been coming over to grab a share of the Chinese market in recent years? Beautifully done. If that Zhong fella doesn't want to earn money, who can he blame? So what if our tickets were selling slowly? Our sales can still do great. The second round of tickets can be released now. All right. They were selling so well that others started envying them. Who could resist the temptation of seeing such large amounts of money rolling in? A lot of people had gone crazy over this. To put it bluntly, they were here to rob them of their money. Online. The scolding was continuing. Those three have also sold out? There are really people buying their tickets? Damn. They have so many fans. This makes me so angry. They haven't released the VIP tickets for sale yet. They've been released, but I can't get them at the market rate. That's right, I heard that they're selling at 30 to 40,000 renminbi a pop now. 30 to 40,000 renminbi? That's already old news. The latest I've heard is that Park Jaesang's first row of VIP seats are now fetching close to 50,000 yuan. Who doesn't know that all this was planned by those celebrities and the ticketing agents? They were the ones who pumped up the prices to sell the tickets through scalpers. Only a fool would buy. But people actually bought them. Many fans of the Japanese and Korean celebrities came forward at this time. Why wouldn't we buy them? I have nothing but money. Right, I'm a tycoon. So what if they're selling it on the black market? In the end, the money still goes to our oppers. I'm more than willing to contribute my share. Ha 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 ha, buy, buy, buy. Who has VIP tickets? I'll buy one. 50,000 renminbi is my offer. Does anyone still have Kim Ji-chan's VIP tickets? 
I won't buy them if they're too cheap. You people are too nosy. We have the money and we can buy as expensive a ticket as we want. We can afford it. We just want to support our oppers. Deal with it. Right, we'll buy them no matter how expensive they are. Kim Ji Chan, I love you. The more expensive they are, the more I'll buy. Park Jae Sang, I love you. What's 50,000 renminbi anyway? Kimura, Kimura, I desire you. For the sake of our idol, do you think we can't bear to spend this bit of money? A group of wealthy people were clamoring to sweep up the VIP tickets in a show of support for the three Japanese and Korean celebrities' concerts in China. Coincidentally, a lot of VIP tickets suddenly started appearing everywhere in the form of scalp tickets. The rich and fanatical fans swarmed them at once. They've released the tickets. They're finally out. It's the VIP tickets. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to buy any. Ha ha ha, here I come. Buy, buy, buy. But when they saw the ticket prices, everyone was dumbfounded. The whales were so shocked that their jaws dropped. How much? How much do they cost? 500,000 renminbi? They're selling them at 500,000 yuan per ticket. Kimura, Kimura, I, heck you. Oppa, Oppa, your grandpa. The more expensive they are, the more I'll buy, buy your sister. 500,000 yuan? Only an idiot would buy it. Have you all gone crazy? What the heck? Do you really think I'm a sucker? I already bought tickets at 100,000 yuan. But 500,000? Why don't you all just go to hell? Have you gone crazy from trying to make money? I can afford a condo with that 500,000 renminbi, all right. Heck! How infuriating! Even if I'm rich, this is no way to be spending money. The rich and fanatical fans who had been supporting the oppas just a moment ago were now jumping up and cursing. As for everyone else, it was needless to even mention how they reacted. Instantly, the entire country descended into scolding. This is too sinister. Damn, damn, damn. Just go to hell. Whoever buys them is an idiot. I won't let them earn a single cent from me. Get out of China. Get out of China. I want a refund for my ticket. Right, I don't want to watch it anymore. I want a refund for my ticket. Everyone was infuriated. Even the Japanese and Korean celebrities' fans were cursing. The media also gave their harshest criticism. Who will stop this crazy profiteering? VIP tickets at 500,000 renminbi each? Excessive hype leads to sky high ticket prices. Three concerts on the verge of collapse. People request refunds. From the fans, I'm not impressed by their behavior this time. Scolding. Scolding. And more scolding. The entire country was in an uproar. The initial ticket prices had already been quite controversial, with many voices of doubt among the people. When Zhong Yi's honest ticket prices were announced, the questioning became even stronger. Later, when the Japanese and Korean celebrities deliberately pumped up their concert's VIP ticket prices, it aroused even more disapproval from countless people and the problem neared a tipping point. When the 500,000 renminbi tickets appeared, the three concerts with sky-high ticket prices finally collapsed. It was a complete collapse. The Japanese and Korean celebrities' concert's second round of ticket sales instantly stopped selling. The Japanese and Korean celebrity team members were stunned. Kim Ji-chan was dumbfounded. Park Jae-sang was dumbfounded. Kimura Kozuyo was also dumbfounded. Who is it? Who is selling the tickets? 500,000 renminbi? Heck, what the hell is the ticketing agent trying to pull? Even when they were flooded by scolding from the Chinese people and media, they still did not know what had happened. They hurriedly investigated the situation, then found out some news that enraged them. Their VIP tickets had earlier been purchased in bulk by someone through their connections. There was no evidence. There were no receipts. However, the sources of all the purchases pointed in one direction. Zhong Yi Studio. Zhong. Yi. Your sister. Heck your grandpa. 
You're too hecking mean. How dare you scam us? This is too cruel. He's too cruel. Heck. How can there be someone like him? The Asian philanthropic ambassador? You should hecking be the Asian hooligan ambassador instead. They were finally panicking. The three Japanese and Korean celebrity teams hurriedly tried to salvage things. Issuing statements. Making clarifications. Giving explanations. However, all of that was useless. It was already pointless. The momentum had already gathered, and public opinion was crushing them to death. By now, they could not turn things around no matter how hard they tried. They had been nailed to a cross and crucified. The ticketing issue was already messed up. Even before the concerts had begun, they were getting scolded like crazy. Seeing this unfold before their eyes, they were on the verge of collapse. Before this, they had thought that it wouldn't matter. When their concerts officially started, that would be the time to compete on who was better. However, no one expected that before the concerts even took place, they would get beaten back by Zhong Yi. Wave after wave of underhanded methods rushed in like a monsoon. Every method was more vicious and despicable than the last. They knew that Zhong Yi was wicked and shameless, and had seen this in the news as well. However, they never expected that this Zhong fellow could actually turn out to be so wicked and so shameless. They have never come across someone like this before. Having been in the entertainment industry for so many years, this was really the first time they'd come across someone like him. There was no one similar to him in Japan. There was no one similar to him in Korea. There was no one similar to him in the entire world. Only in China. Only Zhong Yi was like this. Today, their horizons had truly been broadened. Chapter 1404, the three Japanese and Korean celebrities are crying. On this day. At Zhong Yi's parents' house. It was old Wu's day off and included a rare family lunch. At the dinner table, Wu Ziqing said gently, I've heard that in the past few days, the Japanese and Korean celebrities have been going through a lot because of you. They weren't even able to sell out their concert tickets. Zhong Yi smacked his lips and said, I guess so. His mother rolled her eyes. Oh, why are you so awful? His parents also knew heard this in the news. For the past two days, a crazy amount of attention had been given to this event. Zhong Yi said, I was just letting them have a taste of their own medicine. They were spreading fake news about me to hype up their concerts. The Japanese and Korean people even came together to slander me and restricted me from entering their countries. And stopped me from going over there? So now that they've come into my territory, how could I possibly let them off easy? His mother said, shouldn't that be within Ziqing's authority? Why don't you just get Ziqing to chase them away and handle the problem? Wu Ziqing said, he doesn't want me to interfere. Zhong Yi smiled and said, there's no need to bother her. It's just a small matter. This bro will handle it himself. Wu Ziqing asked, tomorrow will the very first show of your crosstalk tour. Are you ready? Don't worry. Zhong Yi took a bite of food and said, I've been working with old Yao for so long. We'll be able to handle a simple crosstalk. It will definitely be executed perfectly. Face? Respect? Reputation? He wanted it all this time. However these people arrived, he would send them packing the same way. The countdown to the start of the events was getting closer. Elsewhere, the Japanese and Korean celebrity teams were panicking. Park Jae-sang was currently in a call. Didn't we already agree to it, old who? Jae-sang, I really have some last-minute things to take care of. Then who am I going to get as my guest star? Try asking someone else. Kimura Kozuyo. How can you just decide not to come? Kozuyo, it's not that we don't wish to support your concert, but you're putting us in a really difficult situation too. In China, we have the best relationship with your band. But you guys are now in a conflict with Zhong Yi. Although we've never had any dealings with teacher Zhong before, with teacher Zhong's status in the industry, there's no choice for us but to show him respect. But. Let's end the call here. I have to go. The concerts were about to begin. But they'd only just realized that they couldn't find any celebrities to support their acts. They were all big names in Asia. Yet no one wanted to play for them. 
This was absolutely the biggest joke ever. This was a death smack to their faces. Normally, when these foreign celebrities came to China to hold a concert, they would invite some of their Chinese celebrity friends to guest star during the show. At their level, or any Japanese or Korean celebrity who could host such a large concert in China, they would know some people at the very least. Out of the ten people that they invited, even if seven could not make it, the remaining ones would have no issue joining them at their concerts. It was always the same every year, finding a local celebrity to help open the show and increase the hype of the headliner. But it was different this time. All of those whom they had been in contact with since a month or two ago had changed their minds. First, their reputations had now gone downhill and everyone was cursing at them. The fallout from the high ticket prices could also be said to have had a fatal effect on them. Second and most important, it was Zhong Yi's attitude towards the whole affair. It was very obvious that Zhong Yi was in direct conflict with the Japanese and Korean celebrities with the intention of challenging them. If it were Zhong Yi who started bullying them for no reason, they would not care. But the issue here was that it wasn't so. Zhong Yi had been forced to do this after the damaging fake news. Most of the Japanese and Korean celebrities, including Kim Ji Chan and Park Jae Sang, had also participated in it, so Zhong Yi couldn't be blamed for falling out with them. So at this critical juncture, who in the country would dare to step on Zhong Yi's toes? Zhong Yi's friends and those Chinese celebrities who sought to overturn the injustice against him were even secretly cheering for him. Invite us to your concerts. Forget it. Just play on your own this time. We really can't afford to do this favor for you all. Everyone's thoughts and concerns were surprisingly consistent. The three celebrity teams from Japan and Korea were on the verge of tears. It wasn't the first time that some of them were here in China, but it wasn't like this in the past. Back then, be it their fans or celebrity friends, everyone had always been very friendly to them. So why was it different now? John Yi. It was all because of that person. That they got thwarted right at the start. And encountered difficulties at every turn. Did he really have such widespread influence in China? What should they do then? How should they handle things? If there were no supporting acts? Then they could only take it upon themselves to carry the entire performance. On the other hand, preparations for Zhong Yi's tour were already in full swing. He even managed to invite quite a few crosstalk comedians for the supporting acts. A few of them were crosstalk rookies, and two were crosstalk veterans who had never conflicted with Zhong Yi before. The lineup couldn't be called prestigious, but it was good enough, nonetheless. Several of these crosstalk comedians had been brought onto the Spring Festival Gala by Zhong Yi this year, so they were currently at the height of their popularity as well. Although this was Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai's tour, it would be impossible for them two to carry the entire show all by themselves. They would definitely need to have some supporting acts. Zhong Yi's relationship with the crosstalk world was not good, but ever since his marriage, the crosstalk world was no longer at loggerheads with him. Besides, the crosstalk comedians who took part in this year's Spring Festival Gala could easily be summoned with just a phone call by Zhong Yi. This showed that everyone really gave him a lot of respect as well. The Spring Festival Gala's executive director role had indeed helped Zhong Yi build up quite a fair few connections. This was especially useful at crucial times, like the one he was going through right now. Many celebrities were even behaving uproariously on Weibo. Chen Guang's Weibo, Zhong Er, let me go and give a crosstalk for you too. Ning Lan, actually, my dream has always been to become a crosstalk comedian. Zhong Xia, at Zhong Yi reserve a ticket for me. I'll go and support you. Xiao Dong, he he, I want a ticket too. Since I can't do crosstalk, I can only go and give you my support. Unexpectedly, Zhong Yi did not turn any of them down. Zhong Yi's Weibo, all right, I'll see all of you there then. Let's all have fun and whoever wishes to come on stage to perform, I'll play the fall guy for you. Ha 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 ha. And back to the Japanese and Korean celebrities. It had been several days, but the netizens were still scolding them. I want a refund for my ticket. Hurry up and scram. Right, don't ever come back to China. We don't like people who just come here with the aim of making a quick buck. Park Jae Sang's concert tickets were somehow sold out. But the other two celebrities were not that lucky. 
quite a few of Kim Ji Chan's concert premium tickets were unsold and wasted. As for Kimura Kozuyo, he was the least popular in China and also the one who suffered the greatest losses this time. Of all the concert tickets, even some tickets from the lowest tier couldn't be sold and were still being promoted on the ticketing agent's website. Although it seemed like they had only lost a small sum since most of the tickets were sold, the damage to their reputations was fatal. On one side, it was boisterous. On the other side, nobody showed any interest. With this comparison, the difference was too great. It was so great that everyone could feel the sting on the faces of those three Japanese and Korean celebrities. They were all Asian A-listers. And some were even more popular than Zhong Yi in Asia. Could it get any more miserable than this? Seeing this, those in the industry could not help but sigh. Zhong Yi is really capable at picking fights with other people. He must have gone through loads of battles. Even before their shows have started, he's already crushed all three of them. When it comes to being a hooligan, those three aren't a match for Zhong Yi even if they team up. Let's see how things will turn out after their concerts take place. Yeah. Whether or not they can turn things around all depends on that. Right, it's still too early to say who has won. After all, no one has put on a crosstalk show in recent years. Chapter 1405, The Crosstalk Tour Begins. Friday. On the opening day of the performance. Zhong Yi and Yao Jiantsai's crosstalk publicity billboard was hanging outside the Beijing Exhibition Center. It was still two hours away from the start, but sea of people had gathered below the billboard. Who still has tickets for the show? They've all been sold out. Oh my god, there are so many people. I was still thinking of trying my luck to buy a ticket from here. Are there really no tickets left at all? If I can't manage to buy a ticket, I'll have to go back home to catch the live stream. There's really no one else who can command a huge turnout like this. That's right. Since the olden days, which crawlstalk comedian has had such great appeal? Whose crawlstalk tour could be organized to such a level? Not even the most famous crawlstalk masters could do it. Crawlstalk has really come back to life. There was an overwhelming number of cars. The major roads within two kilometers of the venue were jam-packed with traffic. It was an extremely spectacular scene that could only be called unprecedented. At the traffic police department. The roads are all jammed. Traffic is not moving anymore. What's happening? What's the occasion today? Today? Zhong Yi is holding a tour stop at the Beijing Exhibition Center today. I knew it. Quick, increase the manpower. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The traffic police were out in full force and working at five times their usual capacity to help ease the traffic flow. In the crosstalk world. People were already waiting for the live stream to start. In the past ten years, no one has dared hold a crosstalk tour. That's right, not to mention holding it at a venue as large as the Beijing Exhibition Center. No one has dared to think about holding a crosstalk at a place like the Beijing Exhibition Center before. Let's see what he's got. The crosstalk world was also very concerned because this was a major event that didn't happen too often in their industry. There was actually someone who dared to hold a crosstalk at a place like the Beijing Exhibition Center. Master Sun? Master Kong? Not even they had dared do so. The three Japanese and Korean celebrity teams. Park Jae-sang was performing at the same time as Zhong Yi today. But what the Japanese and Korean celebrity teams were most concerned about was this show that Zhong Yi was going to put on. They wanted to see what it was all about and what kind of a situation it would pose to them. It was likely that Korea and Japan had crosstalk as well, but the format and delivery were different from China's. However, their crosstalks were without a doubt not popular with their people. So these Japanese and Korean celebrities, as well as their teams, were all very puzzled. Why would anyone want to watch a crawlstalk? Why would anyone like it? Since when could crawlstalks compete with a singer's concert? It didn't make any sense. There was absolutely no comparison. Kim Ji-chan was watching the live stream. Kimura Kozuyo and his interpreter were watching the live stream as well. They wanted to understand their enemy so that they could come up with a strategy to deal with the situation. His parents powered on their computer. 
Quite a few of those from the entertainment circle also launched the live stream of the event. Countless citizens were waiting for it to begin. 100,000. 1 million. 5 million. Even before the opening act, and before the show began, the live streaming site that Zhong Yi had exclusively authorized to broadcast the Crawlstalk Live had exceeded 6 million concurrent viewers. Further, that number was still rising. This dumbfounded the site's executives and staff. 7 million. 7. 5 million. It was too popular. It was way too hecking popular. The netizens were leaving comments below. I'm so anticipating this. Hurry up and begin already. This is making me so damn anxious. I haven't heard Zhong Yi perform his crawlstalk in a year already. Although Zhong Yi has been up to all kinds of different activities in the past few years like singing and skit acting, as well as so many other things, I still like his crawlstalks the most. Previous poster, you're my bosom buddy. Me too. He and old Yao are the best duo. They're goddamn made for each other. That's right. They're a pair who haven't appeared in the crawlstalk world in over 200 years. Wow, it's almost starting. It's starting, it's starting. 10 million. 20 million. 30 million. At this moment, the live stream reached an astounding 30 million viewers. Furthermore, the number was still increasing as though there was no end. At the Beijing Exhibition Center. At the venue. The host announced, next please enjoy the crawlstalk by Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai. The live audience flew into a frenzy. Ah. They're here. Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi. They're coming out. Applause thundered. Tens of thousands of people were cheering. Ning Lan was clapping in the audience. Xiaodong and Chen Guang were cheering in the audience. Zhong Yi's celebrity friends had all come to show their support for him. Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai walked out onto the stage in their crawlstalk attire. The audience had not seen this kind of clothing in a long time. Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai themselves also missed the times when they were wearing it. The shouting and cheering were extremely loud. Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai couldn't make themselves heard amid the brouhaha. They could only look at each other with a wry smile. Zhong Yi stood in front of the microphone. Thank you, thank you. Yao Jintsai clasped his hands and said, Thank you, everyone, for your support. The reception only toned down after a full 30 seconds. Only then could Zhong Yi say, Everyone is really enthusiastic with their support. Thank you so much. We really can't repay your kindness. I heard that there was a huge traffic jam around the Beijing Exhibition Center tonight. The audience laughed out loud at this. Yao Jintsai said happily, I think there was. Since the audience is so supportive, we better give a proper performance to them today. Yao Jintsai said, we should. Zhong Yi said, I'm gonna throw out everything I have today and talk about things that would be banned from the television broadcasts. Ah. Zhong Yi added, actually, everything we say tonight will not be allowed on broadcast. Hi. The live audience laughed. Pfft. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Zhong Yi said, thank you. We're not the only ones who have a show tonight. Across from here, not far away, there is a concert going on as well. But for everyone to come and attend our show tonight and watch the live stream online, it shows that all of you truly love Crawlstalk. Yao Jintsai agreed, that's right. Across from here? A concert? The audience's eyes lit up as they all knew who he was referring to. It's a good thing to have competition, but sometimes competition can be so intense that it gets annoying. Is that so? Zhong Yi said, with the two shows opening right across from one another and each of us trying to sell tickets to our own show, how can I allow him to push me into second place? The audience laughed, ha 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 ha. Yao Jintsai asked, oh, really? Zhong Yi said, so we sought a master's opinion. Oh. The master instructed me to put up two mirrors at our entrance and point it in his direction. You mean? So that we can reflect whatever evil aura there is to him. The audience laughed, foot, ha 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 ha. Yao Jintsai asked, a demon revealing mirror? 
Zhong Yi said, if you place it there, the people across from us wouldn't just accept it. That's right. After their boss comes out and sees himself in the mirror every day, it would get around to him what is going on. Are you shining that on me? No way, I better get a master here to deal with this. Oh. When the master arrives, he'll realize how bad of a situation it is and say, Ayo, he's resorting to the occult. Then what should be done? Buy four mirrors and shine it back at them. The audience laughed. Ha 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 ha. Zhong Yi continued, the boss across from us will come out and realize it, then say, Ayo, they're shining it back at me. Yao Jinsai said, he'll get it immediately. No way, let's seek the master's advice again. Ah. When the master arrived, he suggested using six mirrors. He added another two. The audience was laughing loudly. Zhong Yi said, ta, 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 ta. There. That's six mirrors now. So how would the boss across from us handle it? Get the master of course. He gesticulated with his hands. Eight mirrors. Yao Jintsai was floored. There's no need to get a master's advice if this is all they're saying. What's the point of asking a master if it's just adding two mirrors each time? The audience burst into laughter. Ha 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 ha. Hey yo. Foot, ha 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 ha. Zhong Yi said, pa, 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 pa. That's eight mirrors now. With a pause, he said, with this little fight of theirs, they rescued four glass factories from closing down. Watching the live stream. The viewers were bursting into laughter again. Ha 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 ha. Ayo, I'm so tickled. A simple opening was all it took to warm the audience up. Chapter 1406, a huge success. The live streaming channel had reached 50 million concurrent viewers. At the venue. Zhong Yi said, but actually, none of that worked. Yao Jinsai said, that's right, so why did you even have to get a master? An actor still has to depend on their true skills. That's correct. So I went to get plastic surgery. Ah. So that was what you meant when you said, true skills. Ning Lan giggled, pfft. Xiaodong laughed, ha 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 ha. Chen Guang and Fan Wenli were both laughing hard. Zhong Yi said, yeah. Yao Jinsai said, oh. I had to make a trip to Korea. Yeah, the plastic surgery industry there is really quite advanced. Everyone sat up in rapt attention. Here it comes. They're finally touching on the topic of Korea. Zhong Yi said, I bought a plane ticket and boarded the flight. When I got seated in the plane, he, who do you think I saw? It turned out that a Korean celebrity was sitting next to me. Yao Jinsai asked, who was it? It was a Korean big shot, the famous Asian singer, teacher Piaro Isheng. Yao Jinsai exclaimed out loud, Piaro Isheng won? His kidneys must be really strong then. The audience burst into laughter. Ha 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 ha. Hey yo. Ah ha 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 ha. Philander for a lifetime? Pfft. Park Jaesang was nearby, holding a concert across the way. A famous Korean singer? Whose surname was also Park? The audience could not help but think of that person and immediately became very excited. Zhong Yi said, I don't know if his kidneys are strong or not, but in any case, I was extremely puzzled. I asked him, Teacher Piaro, with your status as a big shot, why are you sitting in economy class? Teacher Piaro told me that their country's economy wasn't doing too well recently, so he had to come to China to find work. Yao Jintsai sighed. True that. He thinks that it's easy to earn money in China. Yi. 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 The audience was hooting and laughing. Why did they come to China? To make a quick buck. The gag about the expensive tickets had already made its appearance through this joke segment. John Yi's crawlstalk was really full of scolding. John Yi said, when the plane took off, I started feeling really terrible. It was so nauseating. Yao Jinsai replied, yo, don't tell me you have air sickness. Yeah. With all that trembling in the plane, I got really nauseated, yet I could not find a place to vomit. 
When I saw that teacher Piero had fallen asleep with his eye mask on, I didn't hesitate and vomited all over his chest. Whoa, that's so disgusting. Zhongxia and her daughter couldn't help laughing out loud. Li Xiaoxian, who was wearing sunglasses and sitting in a corner, was also laughing like crazy. He was so bad. Zhong Yi was so bad to the bone that no one could compare to him. Zhong Yi said, he didn't move, and neither did I. Soon after, the plane landed safely on the ground. That's when he woke up and I hurriedly asked him, are you feeling better? Yao Jintai exclaimed, hey yo. Do you still feel terrible? Could you be any more wicked than that? The audience was laughing so hard they couldn't breathe. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Zhong Yi said, hi, please take care of your health. Goodbye. Yao Jintai said, you're too immoral. He could end up taking the wrong medication because of this. Ha 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 ha. Ayo, I'm dying of laughter. I can't take it anymore, I really can't take it anymore. Many in the audience were slapping their thighs in laughter. Zhong Yi continued, I was still thinking as I got off the plane. Don't you find it really strange? Every country has got its own unique crafts. In the field of plastic surgery, only the Koreans are able to do it so well. Yao Jintai asked, right, why is that so? Zhong Yi gave it some thought. It's probably because they're ugly, H-A with a cute N-C-H-N. Ah. Why else are they called Korea, Hangwa too? So being called Korea would mean that they're a nation of uglies? An ugly country. Whoa, if you put it that way, there's no way to explain Japan 3. Ning Lan laughed. Ha 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 ha. Amy was sprawled out from laughing. Zhong Yi tugged at Yao Jin Tsai. Ha ha ha, then you better try and explain it to me. Yao Jin Tsai pushed him aside. Get lost. Why do I have to explain it? The audience was laughing like crazy. Too cruel. It was too wicked. There was really no one else who could scold in such a way. Japan and Korea had both been brought into the subject. Countless audience members could feel themselves overwhelmed by that long-awaited rush of emotions. How long had it been? How long had they not heard Zhong Yi and Yao Jintai talking on stage without restraint? They would probably have to go all the way back to the time when Central TV had organized that crosstalk competition to be reminded of such a scene. The show was live streamed over the internet today, so the rules were much more relaxed than usual. Unlike being on television where they would be bound by certain guidelines, Zhong Yi and Yao Jintai immediately slipped into form and put on an exceedingly good performance. It was so exhilarating. It was still the same feeling. It was exactly the kind of crosstalk that they used to give. Zhong Yi and Yao Jintai were still as good as ever. The first act ended. The second act was by two young crosstalk comedians. The third act was by two crosstalk veterans. When they put on not too bad performances, the audience was very supportive of them. If it was great, the applause kept going without stop. Of course, the crosstalk comedians who came to help out at Zhong Yi's show also understood. That the audience was only so supportive of them because of Zhong Yi. On today's stage, Zhong Yi was the main lead. Other than him, there was no one in the crosstalk world who could put on such a large scale crosstalk at a venue like the Beijing Exhibition Center. For the fourth act, Zhong Yi and Yao Jintai returned. The fifth act was left to another two young crosstalk comedians. The sixth act saw Zhong Yi and Yao Jintai come back to stage once more. With their appearance for this act, they never left the stage for the rest of the night. The joke segments were continuously dropped. Insults were continuously thrown out. The audience went crazy. Another one. Another one. Don't stop. Tell us another one. The performance went on from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., then from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. According to the performance duration that was submitted to the authorities for approval, it should have ended by 9 p.m. But the audience was unwilling to leave. Zhong Yi could only give a wry smile. Yao Jintai was also feeling helpless. What else could they do? They could only continue with the show. The two of them kept coming back for round after round of encores. One time. Five times. Ten times. 
15 times. The moment they tried to leave the stage, the audience would go into an uproar. Then Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai would get invited back to continue performing before trying to leave again and then get invited back again. This kept repeating. At the end, Ning Lan also joined in the fun and sportingly took to the stage. She did a short crosstalk with Zhong Yi to satisfy her crosstalk cravings. Xiao Dong and Amy were also pulled onto the stage at the insistence of Zhong Yi. He acted as their fall guy as they put in a short performance, with the script prepared for them beforehand. There were plans for Li Xiaoxian, Chen Guang, and Fan Wenli to do the same, but because they were too easily embarrassed, they refused to go on stage. The building could not be any more boisterous. Poking fun at celebrities. Scolding the Japanese and Koreans. Teasing the audience. It was very easy for Zhong Yi with that mouth of his. The laughter from the audience had not stopped ever since the show began. Ha 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 ha. I can't take it anymore. That was so damn funny. This joker. He's too wicked. A crosstalk that was supposed to end at 9 pm had been dragged all the way until 10.30 pm. They returned for an encore a total of 17 times. It was a record number of encores not seen in the crosstalk world before. It was an encore number that had never happened in the history of crosstalk before. Finally, Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai's first crosstalk show could be deemed a huge success, and the audience's mood was also brought to the highest. Chapter 1407, Park Jaesang gets scolded like crazy. At the Beijing Exhibition Center. Backstage. Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai returned. Teachers, you've worked hard. Quick, have some water. Quickly, take a seat. Zhong Yi was fine, but old Yao was sweating profusely. Yao Jintsai had some water and wiped away his sweat. The audience was so passionate. Zhong Yi laughed and said, yeah, but it felt really satisfying. Yao Jintsai slapped his thigh and said, that's right, performing the crosstalk was a great way to blow off steam. Even if you don't pay me for this job, I'd still do it. All right then. Zhong Yi told the organizer's staff, transfer the money that was meant for old Yao to me. Yao Jintsai burst into laughter. Heck off. The staff members were also laughing at this. D.I. 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 John Yi's phone rang with a notification. It was a text from his mother, son, that was a great performance. His eldest young sister's text, brother, you were so cool. Heavenly Queen Shu Malin's text, I watched the entire performance. You delivered it really well. His family and friends had all come to congratulate him. After reading the messages, Zhong Yi smiled and said, Let's go, old Yao. Hurry home and get some rest. There are two more shows over the next two days. Are you game? Yao Jintsai laughed. Let's take this all the way to the end. In the crosstalk world. Many of the crosstalk actors had caught the entire performance as well. What is this? Isn't this the same old thing? The three vulgarities, it's the three vulgarities all over again. How can you call this a crosstalk? I'm also wondering why there are so many people who like watching his crosstalks. No one's done as many encores as he did. However, when they saw how explosive the atmosphere at the venue was and that terrifying number of viewers watching the live stream, they all fell silent. Some people were watching it with the mindset to learn. Which crosstalk comedian didn't hope that they could host their own tour on such a huge stage? They also wanted to understand why Zhong Yi's crosstalks were popular with the people. But there were also some people who watched it with the intention to criticize. They were looking for problems to nitpick. Vulgar. No value. Performance duration exceeding the allocated time. And so on. They had also thought of reporting him to the authorities like they had done in the past giving feedback to the higher-ups and the SARFT. But when they remembered Zhong Yi's wife, they were silenced. Heck! It was better to just forget about it. This was a matter that they could only think about without the chance of taking any action. On Weibo. The talk surrounding Zhong Yi's tour blew up. It was so fun to watch. I was there at the venue and everyone was laughing like crazy. Damn, how did you get tickets? I'm so jealous of you. Yeah, I wanted to go to the venue to attend as well. 
I watched it on the live stream and laughed throughout the entire show. There was no point in time that I could afford to piss. Zhong Yi was amazing. Old Yao too. He played the fall guy really well. With this best duo around, no one in the Chinese crawlstalk world would even come close to them. My mouth is all crooked from laughing so much. Those joke segments insulting the Japanese and Koreans were such classics. Zhong Yi must have been holding in all that pent-up anger before arriving at the Beijing Exhibition Center to vent it all. The Japanese and Koreans deserve it for banning him, ha 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 ha. It was really great. This ticket price was really worth it. It's more than worth it. Whoever managed to get a ticket to Zhong Yi's tour won the lottery. Oh yes, how did Park Jaesang's concert go? I don't know, I didn't pay attention to that. Yeah, what was the situation over there like? It was only at this time that many people suddenly remembered about that other person in the spotlight. Immediately, they began paying attention to the battle that was happening on the other side. At the other show. Park Jaesang's debut concert in China had already ended long ago. He was currently having his makeup removed backstage. His team's staff was unusually excited. Jaesang, you were outstanding today. Yeah, you sang a few songs very well. Although the stage equipment was a little faulty, it was still very good. Ha ha ha, our first shot at the Chinese market went pretty good. What a good start. With this momentum, we can hold another three concerts within the year. Furthermore, the ticket prices have been accepted by the audience, so we can continue selling them at such high prices. When our reputation builds up, we'll have gained a foothold in China and our Asian popularity will grow by another level. There might even be a chance for us to take aim at becoming an Asian heavenly king. Park Jaesang was laughing too. He was also quite happy with his performance today, and the feedback from the audience was not bad as well. Some people still refused to leave the venue after such a long time, preferring to stay behind to cheer for him. Park Jae Sang. Park Jae Sang. Oppa. I love you, Oppa. The cheering was even faintly audible from backstage. From their past experience, this concert was definitely a great success. However, when Zhong Yi's crawlstalk finished, everything changed. Park Jaesang and his team were all dumbfounded. Each and every one of them was stunned as they got caught by surprise. Then, the scolding began. It came with absolutely no warning. Online. Opa's concert was so amazing. Yes, yes, it was pretty good. You guys must not have watched Zhong Yi's performance, right? Ah. Uh, no, I didn't. Do you know how long Zhong Yi and Old Yao performed for? Three and a half hours. What? Three and a half hours. Yet his ticket prices were only one fifth or one tenth of Park Jaesang's concert prices. And you all still say that the concert was pretty good? This time, a lot of people could no longer accept it. With that thought in mind, everyone was finally starting to come around. Damn, that was so not worth it. What a bad concert. The singing was quite all right, but it was not worth it at all. I bought the 3,888 yuan tickets. I'm really feeling the pinch now. What a rip-off. I regret it so much. If I had known, I wouldn't have gone to watch it. When I was listening, it sounded pretty good at first, and I didn't feel there was anything wrong with it. But mother hecker. When I heard about the duration that Zhong Yi's performance went on for, it made me so mad. With the comparison, I've realized that Zhong Yi is truly honest and kind. The tickets were cheap and the show went on for so long too. He even returned for 17 encores. It's simply quality and quantity. I do like Park Jaesang Opera, but they still shouldn't have scammed us like this. It's not like our money fell from the sky. Even if we wish to support our idols, they shouldn't have exploited us this way. They really did come to make a quick buck. The scolding in Zhong Yi's crawlstalk was really correct. What's more, the microphone also went dead during the concert. Right, there were all sorts of problems. I'm a fan turned passerby. It's better to support Zhong Yi in the future. Yeah, our local celebrities are much more honest than other people. I used to scold Zhong Yi too. But this time, I've really got nothing to complain about for his crawlstalk. 
he thoroughly and beautifully completed it. It was totally flawless. I'm now a passerby turned fan. A concert like that and its tickets were actually sold for such high prices? P2E. Whoever gave you the guts to do something like that? The tickets already cost so much, yet they didn't put on a longer show? There was only one encore and that was it? Just look at Teacher Jong's show, then have look at your own show. Aren't you embarrassed? There was a flurry of scolding. Park Jae-sang's concert quickly turned into the target of all scoldings. The concerns that the audience had were indeed an issue. First, there was the incident where the microphone stopped working during the concert, but the problem was solved after changing it. Later on, Park Jae-sang sang out of tune in one of his songs. For the latter half of the concert, there were even some problems with the backing tracks. But logically speaking, such incidents were hardly avoidable in a live concert. Jong Yuanchi could not avoid, Shu Mailan could not avoid them, and it was also impossible for any other international superstars to avoid them. Such situations were usually considered to be within acceptable range, and if one had counted, the incidents in Park Jaesang's concert were a relatively small issue. It was considered quite satisfactory overall. But with this, the problem of the high ticket prices finally surfaced. It was still that same old saying, nothing stands up to comparison. Zhong Yi's tour had stirred up too many concerns. On one side, high ticket prices. Microphone failure. Show duration lasting only slightly more than two hours. Only one encore. Set list consisting of mainly old songs that have been heard many times before by the audience. On the other side, low ticket prices. Entirely new jokes. 17 encores. Show duration of three and a half hours. With this comparison, how could there be no scolding? Park Jaesang's Chinese fans were criticizing him even more ruthlessly than the others. The unhappiness over the high ticket prices had finally boiled over. The faces of Park Jaesang's team staff had all turned green with anger. What the hell? Jaesang sang very well. The concert was clearly a success. This is all because of Zhong Yi. 17 encores? Zhong. You must have done this on purpose. Zhong Yi. Heck your grandpa. Instantly, Park Jaesang's team figured out Zhong Yi's cruel scheme and cursed at him in rage. But there was no point in swearing. They had lost. They had been utterly defeated. Chapter 1408, you must be doing this on purpose. The next day. Saturday. The news headlines were all occupied by Zhong Yi. Crosstalk tour blows up. Zhong Yi breaks many records. Park Jaesang's concert meets its Waterloo. Plans for Park Jaesang's seven concerts within two years go up in smoke. Zhong Yi gets the last laugh. The Shanghai Crosstalk stop will begin tonight. In the morning, Park Jaesang led his team to board the plane and returned home gloomily. Everyone knew that the results, the talk, and the scolding they were getting now made it very difficult for them to return to the Chinese market in the short term. This time, their team that had arrived confidently in high spirits had been sent packing by a ruthless slap from Zhong Yi. Kimura Kozuyo and his team were now preparing to face this great enemy. Kim Jichan and his team called for an emergency meeting. Park Jaesang has lost so badly. It's our turn to go up against him next. How are we going to deal with it tonight? Hurry up and discuss the countermeasures. We can't just sit still and wait for death. Old Park's concert was actually pretty good, but it still got criticized to such an extent. I really can't believe it. It's all that John Guy's fault for causing so much trouble. We have to fight back. Right now, the issue that we're getting criticized most about is the high ticket prices. Everyone thinks that the performance will not be worth the price, so I have a suggestion. What suggestion? Let's extend the duration of the concert. But the duration has already been submitted to, we'll just get fined at most. Didn't Zhong Yi also exceed the time limit set for his show? If he can do it, we can do it too. We can't change the ticket prices anymore, but if teacher Kim Ji Chan works harder and put in a little more effort to sing a few more songs, that will make up for it. That way, the audience will find it easier to accept the prices. 
we will not end up as passive and having to react to the situation as Park Jae-sang did. I don't believe we can't get the praise we deserve that way. We mustn't make the same mistakes that Park Jae-sang made. Didn't the audience find his concert's duration too short? Then we'll just have to put on a show for as long as we can. Good idea. I agree. I agree too. All right, that's settled then. Kim Ji-chan's team had decided on their emergency response. They absolutely couldn't afford to screw up their concert in China. As an Asian superstar, no one could afford to lose the biggest market in Asia, China. That same night. Shanghai. John Yi's second show was starting. The explosive scene at the venue could no longer be described with words. Ah. John Yi. I love you. You're the best. In the live streaming channel. The number of viewers kept rising. 10 million. 30 million. 50 million. 60 million. Even more viewers were online today than yesterday's show at the Beijing Exhibition Center. This was exactly what word of mouth could achieve. John Yi's crosstalk yesterday had truly made a lot of people laugh like mad, and a lot of people had gone to watch the recorded broadcast later on at the recommendation of their family and friends. After watching it, many of them were standing by to catch today's live stream with great anticipation. This was truly like a grand affair taking place in the crosstalk world. It was a celebration of the people. And Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai did not disappoint either. The moment they appeared, they ignited everyone's laughter with just a few words. Ha 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 ha. This is so damn funny. Awesome. 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 I am really convinced by that mouth of Zhong Yi's. This is what a true crosstalk master should be like. And he didn't even repeat jokes. Yeah, I also thought they'd be reusing some of the jokes from yesterday or before that. Every single joke is a new one. This is so satisfying. I won't get sick of watching Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai's crosstalk even if I watch it for three days and three nights straight. One act. Three acts. Five acts. Finally, it was 9 p.m. At the venue. On the stage. Zhong Yi watched the shouting crowd and gently rubbed his temple. He said with a headache, it's already nine o'clock, why aren't you people leaving yet? How are we supposed to deal with this? The audience. Ha ha ha. Ha. We're staying put. Right, we'll be staying over tonight. We'll all live here tonight. Zhong Yi said, are you guys really not gonna leave? Well, all right, I'll take my leave then. Yao Jiantsai tugged at him. Hey, 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 how would it make you look if you leave now? The audience cramped up with laughter again. Zhong Yi said, actually, the time on the ticket indicates that the show ends at 9 p.m., so any time we run over by is all given to you all free of charge by me. Teacher Yao and I don't have anything else but stamina. Since you all like listening to us, then all right, we'll carry on talking for a little more. The audience was shouting madly. Good. Good. Tell us a few more jokes. Zhong Yi laughed. You people really just want to watch the world burn. The authorities won't be looking for you, but they'll come to trouble me. Eh, guess I'm just going to have to get fined again then. Yao Jiantsai laughed and said, are you even afraid of that? Zhong Yi said, hey, hey, don't talk nonsense. Yao Jiantsai laughed. Ha 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 ha. The audience also burst out laughing. Get fined? Trouble you? Your wife is the SARFT's leader. Who would dare cause trouble for you? Then, Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai began giving encore after encore again. One time. Five times. Ten times. The audience went into a wave after wave of uproar. The entire venue was filled with laughter. 10.30 p.m. On the other side of Shanghai, Kim Ji-chan's concert came to an end. Once backstage, Kim Ji-chan nearly collapsed on the spot. He was panting hard and his throat had gone all hoarse. He only managed to utter one word after trying to speak for a long time. Water. The assistants rushed over to serve him. Everyone on the team was extremely excited. Teacher Kim, you sang very well today. 
You've worked hard. You did a great job. The praise for our concert will definitely blow up. That's right, you sang for over an hour past the indicated show time. Ha 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 ha, didn't John Yi also perform until 10.30 p.m.? We managed to do it till 10.30 p.m. too. Who's afraid of who? It's just a matter of competing on who has more stamina. Right, it's not like he's the only one who can do it. Yeah, we can do it too. But not long after, every one of Kim Ji-chan's team was dumbfounded when they found out about the situation at Zhong Yi's crosstalk in Shanghai. At 10.30 p.m., Zhong Yi's show was still not finished. At 11 p.m., Zhong Yi's show continued. Only at 11.30 p.m. did the curtains draw on Zhong Yi's show. Four and a half hours. It went on for a full four and a half hours. They returned to give 25 encores. And broke the records yet again. Voices of scolding instantly swept over. What the heck? Kim Ji-chan, get the heck out of here. You only performed for three and a half hours? But your tickets were so expensive? Just have a look at how Zhong Yi did it. You're dead once the comparisons are made. Dead, I tell you. There's really nothing to complain about the way teacher Zhong treats his audience. 25 encores. Let me ask around, who else can do that? This is how the audience should be treated. Strongly supporting teacher Zhong. Throw the foreign celebrities looking to make a quick buck out of China. To sell tickets at such high prices, they're simply shameless. At this moment, Kim Ji-chan was in tears. His team was in tears. Zhong. Your sister. Heck your grandma. You must be hecking doing this on purpose. I've never met anyone as vicious as you before. Kim Ji-chan had also lost. It was a complete defeat. It was a brutal crushing. Chapter 1409, A Deep Sense of Malice from the Chinese People. Sunday. Shenzhen. Kimura Kozuyo and his team were enraged as well. Kim Ji-chan lost too. It's our turn to take him on now. Let's fight it out with Zhong Yi. Right, I don't believe he can still continue performing like that. Doing that for three straight days? He can't do it even if he's made of steel. This is our chance. Teacher Kimura, it's all up to you now. It's time for us to fight back. That's right. Park Jaesang and Kim Ji-chan have already exhausted all of Zhong Yi and Yao Jinsai's stamina. As long as we can perform for a longer duration than them today, we'll win. This was the last battle. The media turned their attention. The people turned their attention. The industry insiders turned their attention. Everyone was waiting for the outcome of the epic battle of the century between Zhong Yi and the three Japanese and Korean celebrities. On the same night. At the concert venue. Kimura Kozuyo was making his best preparations for the concert. Conserving his stamina and dragging out the time, all of that had been planned out for him by his team, with the show even including an interaction and singing segment with the fans. In this way, they could extend the duration of the show as much as possible and also save some effort on the singing portions. One song. Five songs. Ten songs. Kimura Kozuyo was so tired that he almost collapsed from exhaustion. By the time he started singing the 25th song, he was feeling sick from singing too much. His voice had also gone hoarse. However, when he checked his watch, he saw that it was only 11 p.m. He went on to sing another five songs, even giving a speech and chatting with his fans in between, before finally managing to drag it all the way until 11.40 p.m. It went on for almost five hours. Who had ever held a concert that lasted almost five hours? No one. No one had done something like that. Once the concert was over and upon returning to the backstage, Kimura Kozuyo laid down like he was paralyzed, too tired to even move. Quickly, get the oxygen. Give teacher Kimura some oxygen to inhale. Teacher Kimura, we've succeeded. That was great. We won't have a problem this time. It went on for nearly five hours. We've broken the record. We've really gone all out this time, so the audience will definitely be able to feel our sincerity. After Kimura Kozuyo recovered a little, a sense of satisfaction arose in his heart. 
How many years had it been since he put in this much effort after becoming famous? Now that he had gone all out for his concert, he didn't believe that it wouldn't touch the fans. How could he still not gain a foothold in China like this? Kimura's team was jubilant. Everyone was clapping and applauding in celebration. But at this moment, someone suddenly exclaimed. This is bad. What's the matter? John Yi, he, he, what's about him? Everyone ran over in panic. Then Kimura Kozuyo nearly spat out blood. His team also nearly broke down. On the other side of Shenzhen. John Yi's crosstalk was actually still going on. Yao Jiantsai had already retired backstage to rest. Only John Yi was holding down the fort. Old Yao was very old, so his stamina was not that good. Coupled with the three consecutive shows that he had given for the past three days, old Yao was nearing his limit. By the time Zhong Yi returned for the 18th encore, Yao Jiantsai had stopped. Normally, the show should have ended by then. But Zhong Yi stood on stage to give another three monologues. Afterwards, when Yao Jiantsai managed to recover a little, he went back on stage to partner with Zhong Yi for another two acts. 20 encores. 30 encores. In the end, they finished it off with a performance of The Great Truth One. They actually returned to the stage a total of 37 times for their encores. The Shenzhen Crosstalk stop had been dragged on all the way past midnight to 12.30 a.m. Online. The viewers were full of praise. Everyone was cheering. Heavens, 37 encores. I'm shocked too. He is too dedicated. Zhong Yi really has a conscience for his viewers. I'm convinced. He really gave it his all. This is what an artist should be like. Mother Hecker, I'm going to become a loyal fan of Zhong Yi's from now on. I went to the venue to watch the cross talk. Teacher Zhong put so much effort into it. It was so awesome. My stomach hurts from all that laughing. All three of his cross talks were different. There was no point in time that he took the audience for a fool. It was really great. I've been so amused for the past three days. Did you watch Kimura Kozuyo's concert? I caught a little of it, but there was simply no comparison to Teacher Jong's performance. His concert was lacking by far. Kimura started off singing pretty well, but it was obvious that he was stalling for time after that. His voice also began failing later on, and his singing got so bad. Looking at Teacher Jong's side, the entire show was filled with high-quality jokes and gags. There wasn't even a hint of puffery. The length of the show also went on for nearly an hour longer than Kimura's. The VIP tickets cost 500,000 renminbi? He should go to hell for that. That 500,000 renminbi price tag was probably just hyped up. Regardless, even at 3,500 renminbi, the premium tickets were not worth the money. To think that he's not embarrassed about it. Teacher Zhong's premium seats only went for 588 renminbi. Instantly, the scolding started again. Kimura Kozuyo had been swallowed whole by the scolding from all of China's people. Kimura Kozuyo's team. Everyone was in tears. H. He did that on purpose. He's really taking it too far. Too far. How did it end up like this? That damned hooligan. He's doing this on purpose to get at us. This person is too wicked. If he keeps messing around and taking stabs at people like this every time, how many foreign celebrities can make it in the Chinese market? There won't be a chance to hold any concerts at all. He's just going to keep causing trouble for whoever comes next. Who can possibly go up against him? He's too ruthless. He's making it so that none of us can enter the market. Be it Kim Ji-chan. Park Jae-sang. Or Kimura Kozuyo. These three big-shot Asian A-listers had all fallen victim to Zhong Yi. At this moment, they could feel a deep sense of malice coming from the Chinese people. Within the industry. In the entertainment circle. Everyone was smiling bitterly at what had happened. The outcome has been determined. Yeah, it's already over. In the next two years, none of them should entertain thoughts of entering the Chinese market. Zhong Yi is such a bastard. With his messing around, those three people's reputations have all been ruined. And with the Crawstalk tour being such a great success, 
the three consecutive shows put on by Zhang Yi has made him even more popular in China. With such momentum, who could possibly stop him? He is truly amazing. I'm not worried about Zhang Yi getting banned in Japan and Korea. Instead, I'm worried for those Japanese and Korean celebrities. With that temper of Zhang Yi's, he might really end up relentless in his fight against them. At that time, he might just chase away or foil every Japanese or Korean celebrity the moment they try to step into our country. Then who would dare to come here? The ones who have to be worried at that time will be those from Japan and Korea. Especially for Korea, whose entertainment industry has a relatively large proportion of the market. They can't bear losing a market as large as China. Surely Zhong Yi doesn't have that much power, right? Do you really expect him to be able to fend off all of the Japanese and Korean celebrities by himself? That's difficult to say. Yeah, aren't the three celebrities already a good example of that? When it comes to Zhong Yi, anything can happen. Hi, he's such an oddity of showbiz that appears once every 10,000 years. Anyone who gets targeted by him is going to be in for a lot of bad luck. At night. The Chinese Celebrity Rankings Index was updated. Yao Jintsai's popularity surged. Zhang Yi experienced a great boost in his popularity as well. Although he was already at the top of the Chinese entertainment industry, the crosstalks helped him gain a lot more Chinese fans. Chapter 1410, it can even be done like that? The next day. The effects of the event caused a chain reaction. The Japanese and Korean celebrities with plans of holding a concert within the year in China started to receive calls from their working partners over here. We can't hold it anymore. Yes, we're sorry about that. But we settled the talks beforehand, so why can't we hold it anymore? The people over here are now more resistant to the idea of attending such concerts. There's too much risk now. What risks could there possibly be? The three concerts that were held recently all failed. But we already settled the details of this matter last year. No, we definitely have to hold the concert as scheduled. Then can you lower the ticket prices? Lower it to how much? Ah, uh, the lowest tier tickets should be priced at 300 renminbi, while the highest tier ones should go for less than 1000 renminbi. How is that possible? It won't even cover the costs. Then we can only wait for the latter half of the year before deciding on how we should proceed. We have to wait for this matter to blow over first. One concert. Two concerts. Three concerts. All of the scheduled concerts taking place in China within the next half a year were cancelled because the Chinese organizers could not afford to take the risk. Zhang Yi's move had a cascading effect. The other parties were three of the top Asian celebrities around, yet they had been stopped at the door by Zhang Yi alone. The reviews of the three concerts were appalling, and he even influenced a majority of the people to start boycotting high ticket prices. At a time like this, who would dare to risk holding another concert for a Japanese or Korean celebrity? It would be a small matter if they only lost some money on it. But the worst thing that could happen would be to get themselves into an endless source of trouble. Unless the ticket prices were lowered. However, the standard of what was considered expensive was no longer the same as before. 600 renminbi? 800 renminbi? All of these used to be considered cheap for ticket prices. But with Zhang Yi leading the way, the people were now even finding that to be too high. They would only consider 300 to 500 renminbi to be an appropriate price. But how could those Japanese and Koreans possibly lower it to such a level? Zhang Yi was fine with not making any money, but that wasn't the case for them. Zhang Yi did not require much effort to promote himself, but they couldn't. Tickets priced at 300 to 500 renminbi? They would definitely have to take a big loss in that case. Surely you couldn't ask them to take a loss just to hold a concert, could you? Who does business in such a way? As a result, all the Japanese and Korean celebrities who had plans for a concert this year were implicated by the matter. When the members of the Japanese and Korean entertainment industries heard about the news, they scolded Zhang Yi thoroughly. Everyone knew that this person was the main culprit behind all of this. This new standard in the ticket pricing was all because of him. Ticket prices of 300 to 500 renminbi? A performance duration of 5 to 6 hours? Who the heck can do that? 
Do you think that everyone else is made of steel like you? You're basically forcing everyone into a corner. You're not giving them any chance at all. Soon, the news spread throughout Asia. China temporarily closes its doors to foreign-held concerts. Park Jaesang and Kim Jichan receive the cold shoulder in China. The Chinese people boycott high ticket prices. Zhong Yi makes a move to stop the Japanese and Korean celebrities. Many stars from Japan and Korea affected as plans for 13 concerts in China get cancelled. The Japanese and Korean celebrities suffer heavy losses. Originally, the Japanese and Korean sides had issued a restriction order against Zhong Yi, and the media would basically not report about any news related to him. But this time, the matter had blown up with a widespread effect. It involved almost all of their singers' plans to make money from the Chinese market, so the Japanese and Korean media couldn't not make a mention of it. With this report, the Japanese and Korean people finally found out about what had happened over in China during the past few days. Thus, Zhong Yi's name once again spread throughout Asia in the form of the news. His infamy and notoriety were once again deeply felt by the people of Asia. The Japanese netizens burst into an uproar. What? He's purposely making trouble. It's Zhong Yi again. It's always him. He really dares to challenge us. Even Kimura has been driven off by him? Kimura is a leading name in the rock scene of Asia. How could he possibly get chased back home by someone who does crosstalk? He's obviously targeting our people on purpose. Damn it! This is too infuriating. The Korean netizens were having none of it either. Even Park Jaesang can't beat him? How is that possible? Kim Ji-chan lost as well? Oh my god! What kinds of methods did that Zhong Gai resort to? How could he have foiled the Japanese and Korean singers' concerts in China? Is he a jinx or something? Heck, this person is too infuriating. It really makes you gnash your teeth in anger. The three Asian A-list celebrities combined couldn't even fend off Zhong Yi's tricks in China? Is he superhuman or something? How can he be this fearsome? We must definitely ban him. Completely suppress him. Right. Make his name disappear entirely from the Asian celebrity rankings forever. Zhong Yi was on fire again. Countless people in Asia were cursing and swearing at Zhong Yi for the entire day. They had really never come across such a person in their lives. Furthermore, the Asian Red Cross Society arrived to add more fuel to fire. It might have just been a coincidence, or it could have been intentional. They were already angry over how Zhong Yi, who was their Asian philanthropic ambassador, was banned by the Japanese and Korean authorities. Since the morning, a wave of charity advertisements began showing in concentrated numbers in the Japanese and Korean markets. Every one of the PSAs was created by Zhong Yi and had scenes of him within them. There was the one for AIDS. The one for leukemia. The one for quitting smoking. The one for alcoholism. One after another, they kept broadcasting like it didn't cost any money to show them. Zhong Yi's face was all over the television screens. As long as there were places with PSAs, there would be Zhong Yi. These were the regular monthly ad placements and advertising spots allocated to the Asian Charity Association, and they were free to schedule them as they wished. It was coordinated between the world's charity organizations and the governments beforehand, so it was all done according to an international standard. Japan and Korea had implemented the strictest restrictions on Zhong Yi, but they could not interfere in the matters of the charities and the PSAs. As a result, it led to this wondrous scene being created. A Chinese celebrity who was hated by so many people to the point of gnashing their teeth was now appearing over and over again before their eyes. The Japanese and Korean citizens were nearly driven crazy. Holy heck! Why is he all over the place? Didn't they already show this ad earlier? Your sister. He's just like a lingering spirit. Why are they showing so many PSAs today? With that, their scolding of Zhong Yi got even louder. Over the course of the day, a lot of people from the Japanese and Korean entertainment circle, the media, and the public were finally getting tired of scolding. Their throats had all gone hoarse from doing so. It was at this moment that the most dramatic event happened. The Chinese popularity that Zhong Yi had gained from his crosstalks, 
coupled with the large amount of news coverage by the Japanese and Korean media, as well as the numerous PSAs put out by the Asian Charity Association in Japan and Korea, and not forgetting the entire day of scolding from the Japanese and Korean public. With so much attention. With so much exposure. With so much activity. When the clock struck midnight, the Asian Celebrity Rankings Index was updated. Everyone was dumbfounded as they discovered that Zhong Yi had advanced by another spot in the Asian rankings. He was now officially a big name who ranked in the middle region of the Asian A-list rankings. The Japanese public, damn. The Korean public, damn. The Chinese public, damn. What is with this? Just what is with this? Why is this guy getting more popular the more he gets scolded? It can even be done like that. Chapter 1411, this is what you call an impressive person. In the morning. At home. Zhong Yi was still sleeping when the bedroom door opened. Little Yi. Mom, what do you want? Wake up. What time is it? Where's old Wu? Your wife has already left for work. Wake up quickly. There's news of you on TV. Hi, which day am I not in the news? I'm already sick of seeing it. It's about your Asian popularity ranking. You've advanced again. Huh? Surely not, right? Didn't I get banned in Japan and Korea? Have a look for yourself. All right, let me see. Upon hearing that, Zhong Yi woke up some more. He sat up in bed with a yawn and picked up his phone to browse for his ranking on the Asian Celebrity Rankings Index. He was immediately delighted by what he saw. He really rose in the rankings. He checked online and found that everyone was also talking about this. On Weibo. The Japanese and Koreans must be dumbfounded. Ha 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 ha, they're definitely dumbfounded all right. I learned Korean, so I went to have a look over there just now. The people and media in Japan and Korea are all scolding at Zhong Yi right now. Of course, it's not like they've come across a celebrity as wondrous as Zhong Yi in their country. That's right. Even in our country, Zhong Yi is the one and only oddity. Even the ban couldn't suppress face smacking Zhong? That restriction order is completely meaningless then. Does he really plan on fighting and scolding his way to the top of Asia? Foot, that would be really interesting to see. After browsing through the comments, Zhong Yi gave a little smile. It seemed like this was a possible path too. Didn't he also scold his way up step by step in the Chinese market? He would take on whichever industry he was in, fighting and scolding his way through the bloody clashes, battling more and more valiantly as he went on to reach the top of the Chinese entertainment industry. So this method could be replicated at the Asian level as well. So it was also possible to do the same thing on the Asian stage too. If he had hit a wall every time he got into a fight, Zhong Yi's temper would probably have become much more restrained. But instead, his popularity rose every time he got fought. It kept increasing every time it happened. He could become famous. Vent his frustrations. And make himself happy. Heh, so why not just carry on fighting then? So what does it take to make a hooligan? This is what it takes to make a hooligan. Soon after, the calls from his friends started coming in. Heavenly Queen Shu Mai Lan. Teacher Zhong. Sister Lan. Congratulations, you are now sitting firmly in the middle of the Asian A-list rankings. Hi, you've already ascended to the top of Asia. What am I compared to you? So what if I've reached the top of Asia? I couldn't even get myself onto the International Celebrity Rankings Index. I only managed to earn some success domestically, as well as in Asia. You're already setting your sights on the world, but I had better try to make it in Asia for now. Anyway, congratulations. You're the only one who can gain such wonderful success through fighting and scolding. Haha, ha, this bro doesn't have any other abilities, but I do have plenty of experience in fighting and scolding other people. I can't help it. I was forced to do so because of the colleagues I've encountered over the years. By the way. What's the matter? Um, ah. Uh, never mind, it's nothing. There was something? If there was something, say it. Seeing how she did not want to tell him, Zhong Yi did not probe further. 
At this moment, his mother also received a call in the living room. When Zhong Yi finished speaking, his mother said, Little Yi, your wife just called. She says that she left a document behind. Go and look for it and then send it to her. Zhong Yi asked, Where did she say it was? His mother said, Zheqing said that it's on the nightstand. Zhong Yi went back to his room to look around. Okay, I found it. His father urged him, Hurry up and go. I'm guessing that Zheqing is in a hurry to have it. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Well, this is new. I've always been the one who is absent minded. Old Wu has never forgotten anything before. All right, I'll take it to her. He took the car and drove off to the SARFT. Later that morning, outside the SARFT's compound, Zhong Yi did not drive inside. That would be too ostentatious of him. Every time he came here, he would always park outside and walk in. But when he arrived at the main entrance today, he spotted a familiar woman. She looked like the person who was always with Xu Mailan and could always be seen with her on television as well. Oh yes, he suddenly remembered that this was one of the coordinators at Xu Mailan's agency. She was probably the person who handled the external affairs for the Heavenly Queen. Yang Shui said, Supervisor Chen, this is really an urgent matter. Supervisor Chen said, I can't make the decision regarding this either. Can I see Director Xu for a bit? Director Xu is very busy. He has an entire day of meetings today. But that movie of ours is, the approval is not that quick. It all has to go according to procedure, so I can't guarantee you how long it will take since my words don't count for this. Brother Chen, can't you just let me inside? This is the SARFT's headquarters. It's not some place where we deal with external affairs. Outsiders are not allowed in, and you don't have an appointment either, so it's better that you go back and wait for the news. But, at this moment, Zhong Yi came strolling over to them. When Supervisor Chen saw him, he broke out into a smile. Boss Zhong, you're here? When Yang Shui saw Zhong Yi, she was taken aback. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Yes, I brought something over for old Wu. Supervisor Chen said, Chief Wu should be in a meeting at the moment. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Sure, I'll head to her office to wait for her. Then he pointed at Yang Shui without warning and said, I'll be bringing her along with me too. Supervisor Chen broke out into a sweat. About that, Zhong Yi told Yang Shui, Come on, let's go. Yang Shui was overjoyed, but she looked cautiously at Supervisor Chen. Brother Chen? Supervisor Chen smiled wryly at her. If Zhong Yi wanted to bring her in, who was he to stop her? So Yang Shui followed Zhong Yi into the SARFT compound just like that. Frankly, she had seen this compound many times before. But this was her first time actually stepping inside. Yang Shui said gratefully, Teacher Zhong, thank you so much. Zhong Yi smiled. You're with Sister Lan, aren't you? Yang Shui quickly said, Yes. Zhong Yi asked, Who are you looking for? Yang Shui immediately answered, Director Xu. All right, I got it. Zhong Yi nodded. Director Xu? So it was probably regarding a film. He finally understood Xu Meilin's hesitation over the phone. A person came walking over from the opposite direction. Yo, Director Zhong. Oh, old he. Wanna grab a drink? Can't, I just came to send something to old Wu. I still have loads of work waiting for me when I get back to my office. I haven't seen you since the Spring Festival Gala. Let's meet up soon. I'll call the others from the Spring Festival Gala's organizing committee too. Sure thing, that won't be a problem. Another person spotted him. Boss Zhong, good morning. Hey, Supervisor Liu. You look like you've been enjoying life recently. Haha, ha, I just got fat from eating too much. Hey, I heard that your popularity has grown again. It's nothing much. Oh yes, where's old Shu's office? Turn left on the second floor. It's the second door. All right. Along the way, anyone who saw Zhong Yi would greet him. When they got upstairs, Zhong Yi turned left and went straight over to knock on an office door. Director Xu raised his head. Hey, boss Zhong? Zhong Yi smiled and said, just ate breakfast? 
Director Xu set down his disposable chopsticks. Hi, it's a little late for that, isn't it? Zhang Yi pointed back at Yang Shui with a smile and said, Someone's looking for you to get something done. I saw her standing outside, so I brought her in. It's just a small matter. Why don't you quickly handle it for her? Director Xu smiled and said, With Boss Zhang saying so, I definitely will. Zhang Yi said, All right, it's out of my hands then. He didn't speak any further and just left Yang Shui there before proceeding upstairs himself. Since the start, Yang Shui did not even manage to get a word in. Or rather, she did not even dare to say a word ever since she stepped foot through the SARFT's entrance. She was just looking on in a daze as Zhang Yi made small talk with others along the way. If she hadn't seen it with her own eyes, she really wouldn't have such a strong feeling. She was so envious. This was the SARFT. The authoritative SARFT that held the most power over the entertainment industry. Yang Shui was welling up with emotions. At the moment, she only felt one thing. It was incredible. It was so incredible. In the entire entertainment industry, among the circle of celebrities, who had made it to where Zhang Yi was? Who could do what Zhang Yi had done here? Swaggering around the SARFT and treating it like his own home. Of all the Chinese celebrities, only Zhang Yi could pull this off. He was second to none. This is what you call an impressive person. Chapter 1412, Going to be a Father. Upstairs. In Old Wu's office. Zhang Yi pushed the door open and went inside. Seeing no one around, he picked up a cup and poured himself some tea. Then he sat down and started sipping the tea. Dong dong. There was a knock on the door. Zhang Yi shouted, Please come in. Bai Li stepped into the office. Mr. Zhang, I heard that you were here. You're just in time. Zhang Yi took out the document. Old Wu wanted this. Bai Li smiled and took it from him. All right, I'll send it over to Chief Wu. She's in a meeting right now, and I reckon it'll still take another hour. You'll have to wait a little while for her. Zhang Yi smacked his lips and said, This old Wu, why has she become so forgetful recently? Bai Li thought for a moment and said worriedly, Chief Wu doesn't seem like she is feeling very well these days. Zhang Yi was taken aback. Is that so? Bai Li said, she hasn't been feeling very well these past few days. Zhang Yi snorted. Why didn't I know about that? Bai Li said, Chief Wu must have been afraid that you'd be worried, so she didn't tell you. Zhang Yi got a little miffed. Heh, this old Wu. Bai Li said, then I'll send the documents over to her. After Secretary Bai left and the door closed behind her, Zhang Yi could not help but secretly blame himself. He had been so busy fighting, and making a push for the Asian A-list rankings that he did not even notice old Wu's discomfort the past few days. As a husband, he really had been too incompetent. He definitely needed to reflect upon it. Was it a cold? Or something else? Zhang Yi was not worried at all. He still had the spring water of health item which he had won from the lottery draw the last time. Not mentioning catching a cold or a fever, even if you were about to take your last breath, it would still be able to save you. At most, he would give the spring water of health to old Wu as a cold medication. Zhang Yi would never be stingy when it came to his wife. Ring, ring, ring. His cell phone rang. There was a call for him. Zhang Yi took it out and had a look at the caller ID. Then he smiled. It was a call from Heavenly Queen Xu Mai Lan. Zhang Yi picked up. Hello? Sister Lan. Xu Mai Lan said, Thank you. It's settled? Ha <laughs> ha, with you around, what matter cannot be resolved with the SARFT? It's already settled. They immediately started processing it after you intervened. You've done us a great favor this time. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have been able to line up the movie for the critical period in these few days. If the screening had been delayed, it would have caused a huge blow to the box office earnings and reputation of the movie. We couldn't have afforded such a loss. Zhang Yi said, All right then, it's great that it's settled. As for you, was this the hesitation during the earlier call? Yes, but when I gave it some thought, I felt that I probably shouldn't bother you with it. 
Heh, it wasn't that big of a deal. You could have just asked. Shumailan laughed and said, I just heard from Little Young that you looked right at home in the SARFT. Little Young told me that she was in such awe after stepping inside that she didn't dare utter a word. She also said that you have a good standing there, and that I must definitely thank you properly for your help. Hi, it's all credit to my wife that I am so well respected here. Anyway, I owe you big time. Pick a date. I'll treat you to a meal when you're free. It's nothing, there's no need to. That won't do. It's settled then. Sure, all right then. After hanging up, he sat there and waited. Half an hour. An hour. Finally, the click clacking of high heels came from outside the door. Wu Ziqing opened the door and came in. When she saw her husband sitting on the sofa, she smiled and said, You're here? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. I've been here for more than an hour already. Wu Ziqing closed the door behind her. I thought you already went back. Why would I go back? Zhong Yi stood up and said, Secretary Bai told me that you haven't been feeling well these few days. What's the matter? Where do you feel unwell? Wu Ziqing said casually, It's nothing. Zhong Yi stared at her. And how are you suddenly feeling all right? Old Wu smiled. I'm just feeling a little tired and dizzy. How is that nothing? Zhong Yi became anxious the moment he heard. Hurry, let's go to the hospital to get you looked at. Old Wu waved it off. There's no need. Why are we going to the hospital for such a small matter? Zhong Yi said without explaining, that won't do. You have to go. Come with me. However, Wu Ziqing said, all right, let's wait till tomorrow. Wait for me to finish my work. Zhong Yi said loudly, today, right now, hurry up. Wu Ziqing gave a helpless smile. If it were you, you would refuse to go to the hospital even if it kills you. But when someone else gets a little sick or uncomfortable, you go around shouting at them to go to the hospital. All right, all right, I'll just have to listen to my husband and go. Zhong Yi picked up his car keys. That's the way. Let's go. They left and drove the car straight to the hospital. On the way, Zhong Yi even called someone for help. One of Yao Jintsai's relatives was an executive at the hospital, so they managed to skip the registration process. Analysis. Checkups. A series of tests were conducted. When they received the results, Zhong Yi and Wu Ziqing were both shocked. Old Wu was pregnant. Zhong Yi was stunned. Ah. Wu Ziqing carefully rubbed her stomach. Are you sure? The doctor smiled and said, I'm sure. Congratulations! Zhong Yi exclaimed, Oh wow! Wu Ziqing also laughed. Be quiet, we're at the hospital. Zhong Yi quickly shut his mouth but was unable to control his excitement. He kept slapping his thigh, unsure of how to express his happiness. So my wife isn't sick or something, right? The doctor laughed and said, No, your wife is in good health. The signs of fatigue and dizziness are normal symptoms of any pregnancy. From now on, pay more attention to getting her enough rest and her diet. Zhong Yi grabbed the doctor's hand. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Liu. They left the hospital. Zhong Yi drove old Wu home. On the road, he was laughing happily in the car and quickly informed his parents about the news. Old Wu was also smiling as she called her parents. Noon. At the villa. When the couple stepped through the door, both their parents immediately rushed over. All of them were looking really happy and surprised. Wu Changhe was overjoyed. You're really pregnant? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. Dad, why would it be fake? Li Qingqing quickly said, Let me look at the test results, let me look at the test results. Zhong Yi's mother grabbed the lab test results and looked through them with Li Qingqing. Then the two of them beamed and said, It's real. Zhong Yi's father was also very excited. Great. This is great. Great. Li Qingqing's eyes suddenly reddened and tears almost spilled out. Our Ziqing is quite a bit older than little Yi. Considering her age, I was afraid that she wouldn't be able to conceive. But now, all that worry has poofed away. There's nothing to be worried about anymore. 
this news had come too suddenly for them. Zhong Yi and Wu Zixing were not prepared at all. The parents of the two families were not mentally prepared for it either. This surprise had dropped on them from the sky, but it left them very happy. Then old Wu was surrounded by the family. Zixing, you must start paying attention to what you eat. Right, don't eat any more spicy foods. You are at an advanced maternal age, so the first trimester is very important. You have to stop working overtime from now on. Stop facing the computer every day as well. The radiation is too strong. The parents of both families surrounded Wu Zixing and chatted away. Zhong Yi could not get a word in since he did not know anything about pregnancies, so he listened obediently and noted everything that his parents said. Wu Zixing smiled. Okay, I understand. His mother was still ecstatic over the news. This is great, this is really great. Li Qingqin smiled. Congratulations, in law. You're going to be a grandmother. His mother said, I should be congratulating you instead. You're going to be a grandmother. Wu Zixing sat there calmly. It was obvious that she was very happy as well. She glanced at her watch and then stood up, saying, It's already noon. I should start making lunch. Zhong Yi immediately shouted, Stay right there. Wu Zixing looked back. Ha ha, why? Zhong Yi stared. Sit down and don't move. From now on, you don't have to do any chores. Leave all of that to me. It's time for this bro to show what he can do. Wu Zixing said, But I can still move. I'm still not that far into the pregnancy. Zhong Yi said, No, I'll do the cooking. Leave it to me. You can chat with mom and dad. Zhong Yi said, Don't you worry about it, I'll do it. Can you even cook? The two of them argued over who should do the cooking. Zhong Yi's mother exclaimed, Enough, enough, let me do it. Hearing that, Zhong Yi did not even hesitate. All right then, let my mother do the cooking. His mother nearly fainted from anger. Whoa, you're just gonna throw me under the bus? Everyone laughed, ha 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 ha. Chapter 1413, Congratulatory Messages from the Entire Entertainment Circle. It was the weekend. An advertisement suddenly appeared on all the major television stations. It was for a well-known Korean brand. A car advertisement. The brand spokesperson, Lee Anson. The netizens in China began to ridicule, Li Anson actually came back? Didn't he give up on developing his career in China? He was chased away back then. That incident where he knocked over a fan has made it impossible for him to survive here. He's making a comeback now after that matter has blown over. Look at the timing he's chosen. Isn't he afraid that Zhong Yi will tear straight into him? Ha ha ha, there's something for teacher Zhong to do again. He foiled the plans of the Japanese and Korean celebrities who were planning to perform in China during the next half of the year, and has just sent three of their celebrities packing from here as well. So why does Lee Anson still dare to come back at a time like this? Doesn't he understand how scary Lord John can get? I'll be waiting to see the buzz. Yeah, there's something interesting for us to watch again. Ever since the beginning of the new year when Zhong Yi was slapped with a restriction order from the Japanese and Korean authorities, and after he had angrily chased away a wave of them from China, there were almost no signs of activity by the Japanese and Korean celebrities in China. Some of their events had been cancelled, while others had not taken place yet. Thus, when a Korean celebrity suddenly appeared in an advertisement on TV, and coupled with the fact that Lee Anson, who once fought with Zhong Yi, starred in it, it naturally attracted the widespread attention of the netizens in China. Everyone was waiting for something to happen. Even the Korean car brand's company was nervous. At the car brand's company. In a meeting. Is it really going to be fine having Lee Anson front our advertising campaign? What could possibly happen? Zhong Yi still has a lot of influence in China. Yeah. Right now, he has very strong views regarding Japan and Korea. Why didn't we get a Chinese celebrity to endorse for us instead? Are you afraid of him? What a joke. In fact, I couldn't wish more for him to come up against us. Right now, our brand name is relatively unknown in China. If he really takes us on, there will be a lot more attention given to us. 
That's more than welcome to me. So that's how it is. Yes, I'm just afraid that he won't do it. Besides, what's the worst he can do? He can cause trouble for others or challenge them if they hold a concert. But since we are only running our ads, what trouble could he possibly stir up for us? That's true. Don't think of him like he's some kind of god. Back at home. In the villa. Wu Ziqing was sitting on the sofa watching TV. Zhong Yi was running around the house and waiting on her. Sweetie, are you thirsty? I'm not thirsty. Have some warm water. I don't want to drink. It's better if you drink more. I've already had six glasses since waking up this morning. Ah, then are you hungry? That's enough, just sit down and get some rest. I'm not tired. This bro feels so alive right now. Ring, ring, ring. John Yi's phone rang. It was Ha Chichi from the studio. John Yi answered, Hello. Ha Chichi immediately said, Director Zhong, Lee Anson has an advertisement campaign running in China now. It's for a Korean car brand. I've asked around and found out that he has plans to make a comeback in China. His fan base here isn't small and many of the younger fans are still quite infatuated with him, which is why he came back to test the waters by taking an advertisement endorsement. The endorsement fee he requested was very low, so the Korean car company immediately agreed to use him without any hesitation. John Yi said, Oh. Ha Chichi asked, So what are we going to do? Zhong Yi said, Ah? Ha Chichi was startled. Are we going to? Zhong Yi said, Going to what? Ha Chichi said, Ah, uh, never mind. I just wanted to let you know. Zhong Yi said, All right, I got it. After hanging up, Zhong Yi continued in his attempts to take care of his wife. He had not taken any of what was said to him to heart. Lee Anson's advertisement was appearing more and more by now. From the initial run on just one television station, it was now playing on three television stations. In the end, they even bought quite a bit of the ad spaces at the bus stops and subway stations. An hour passed. Five hours passed. The people were waiting, but there was no action at all. Everyone could not help but feel surprised. A, hey, what is going on? Why isn't there a response from face smacking Jong? That shouldn't be happening. It isn't his style. Many of the netizens were getting anxious. This is bad, did something happen? Zhong Yi must have fallen sick. No, he must have gotten kidnapped. Quickly call the police. Yes, yes, call the police. For a while, all kinds of rumors were flying around. Back at home. When Zhong Yi got a call from the police, he nearly fainted. Zhong Yi said, what? Kidnapped? The police officer replied, everything is all right as long as you're fine. What and what? Um, we received quite a few reports from the public saying that you've been kidnapped. We just wanted to perform our duties seriously, so we decided to call you to verify your current situation. I'm fine, sorry to have troubled you all. I'm glad to hear that. On Weibo. The police also dispelled the rumors. When the netizens saw it, they were all very amused. Someone really reported it to the police. Pfft. That's enough, all right. This is making me laugh like crazy. Just what kind of an image does teacher Jong have in your minds? You guys actually went to lodge a police report just, because teacher Jong did not show any signs of activity for several hours after Lee Anson's ad was shown? It shouldn't be like this. With that temper of Jong Yi's, he should have already torn into him. Yeah, didn't the news from the grapevine already say that Jong Yi has put out the word that he won't allow any of the Japanese and Korean celebrities to come to China to develop their careers? Rumors. Farces. Guesses. At last, the truth was unraveled. Several media outlets suddenly disclosed a major piece of news. Jong Yi's wife is pregnant. Zhong Yi is going to be a father. This piece of news instantly caused a stir. Damn. Is that for real? It's true, the news has already been verified. Someone saw Zhong Yi and his wife at the hospital two days ago. Face smacking Zhong is going to become a dad? What a happy occasion. I knew it. 
I knew something must have happened to Zhong Yi recently. You're right. How could he bother with those Japanese and Korean celebrities at a time like this? Face smacking Zhong, are you going to become a changed man in the future? Don't say it. There might really be such a possibility. If he's going to become a father, he will definitely have to be more mature in the future. No matter what, he should set an example to his child. If he keeps on fighting and scolding other people every day, that wouldn't reflect well on him. That might not necessarily be true. Let's wait another two days to find out. It looks like Lee Anson might have dodged a bullet there. That applies to the car brand as well. They really know how to pick the date. When the news was revealed. It also became boisterous over at Zhong Yi's side. The calls from Zhong Yi and old Wu's family and friends started coming in. Zhong Yi's phone did not stop ringing as a group of people started calling him to offer their congratulations. Yao Jintsai. You're great. Congratulations. Ha ha, thanks. How many months are long? She just got pregnant. Take good care of her and stop picking fights with other people. I got it. I will definitely take very good care of her. Ning Lan. Why didn't you say? I even had to find out from the news. Hi, I was too engrossed in being happy and forgot to tell you all. I'll say it first. When the child is born, you have to make me a nominal kin one. Sure, do you want to be my child's god sister then? Shut up. Ha 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 ha. There was even a flurry of congratulatory voices on Weibo. This joyous news of Zhong Yi and Wu Zixing's had shaken the entire entertainment circle. Chapter 1414, Zhong Yi smashes cars. Beginning, the next day. Sunday. The promotional activities of the Korean car brand that Lee Anson was endorsing had been upgraded further. This time, they had rolled out a premium bulletproof car in an attempt to break into the Chinese market. The Lee Anson advertisement that ran for the entire day yesterday was also used to promote this particular car model. However, they were even more audacious now with their promotions, coming up with a smash one, get one free car event. Anyone who could break the glass on their new bulletproof car at the event venue would walk away with a brand new bulletproof car for free. Promotions. Hype. All of that was carried out in full force. The netizens were watching eagerly. They're risking that much. Are they really going to give out free cars? A bulletproof car? Lee Anson is representing the brand? Is teacher Zhong really not going to take any action? Hi, I guess we won't have anything to look forward to this time. Yeah, face-smacking Zhong is no longer interested in what is happening over here. Now that he's going to be a dad, he's no longer the same. I hereby announce that Face Smacking John has officially retired from smacking faces. Pfft, so it was you people who were egging him on. John Yi was at home trying to take care of his wife yesterday and did not make an appearance to dish out any face smacking. And as a result, you all actually hecking lodged a police report? I can really laugh at this matter for the entire year. Ha 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 ha. I think the main reason for that is because everyone already has a mindset of this fellow's fiery temper. Elsewhere. Lee Anson's team. Ansonopa, the advertisement campaign was very effective. Yes, most of the Chinese citizens are not showing much resistance to it. I think that matter from last year has blown over. We can finally settle down and restart our development in China. That's right. That John guy has gone silent as well. The team was very excited. Ever since they withdrew from the Chinese market, it had been a very tough time for them as they saw their popularity fluctuate greatly. But in the end, they managed to scrape through and survive. Because of Zhong Yi, Li Anson's career as an artist nearly came to an end. If it had continued, Li Anson would definitely have lost his current A-list position in Asia. Therefore, he needed to regain his foothold in China this time no matter what. The first shot had been fired and the momentum was going great. Li Anson also revealed a smile. So what if it was Zhong Yi? So what if he had a black mark in China? Wasn't he still making a comeback? In Japan and Korea. Many artists whose focus was on the Chinese market also started keeping track of Li Anson's situation. They saw that the market was peaceful. 
they saw that the market had gone back to normal. Many of the Japanese and Korean celebrities who had been scared off by Jong Yi were getting restless again. Noon. At a bustling location. In a private function room on the top floor of a restaurant, Jong Yi was playing host to everyone from the studio. Even Rao I mean who was some kind of a part-time agent to Jong Yi had brought along little Chen Chen to join them for the meal as well. Little Wang giggled. Director Jong, congratulations. Tong Fu asked, where's sister-in-law? Jong Yi laughed. She went back to her parents' place today for a meal with her relatives. Chen Chen looked up. Jong Yi, when will your baby be born? Jong Yi smiled and said, in about another nine months' time. Oh. Why? When the baby is born, I'll play with it. You want to watch my child for me? Sure. Rao I mean said nonchalantly, look at how delighted you are, but hurry up and order the food already. I'm getting hungry. Order, order. It's my treat today, so no one has to be polite, Zhong Yi said loudly. Abalone. Lobster. Shark fin. Rao I mean was really not holding back. When Zhong Yi heard that, he began sweating profusely. He prodded her and whispered, that will suffice, don't go overboard with the ordering. We won't be able to finish all the food. Everyone laughed. Rao I mean kept a straight face. Chen Chen and I haven't eaten for several days. We were just waiting for this meal of yours. She closed the menu and said to the waiter, all right, that will do. Chen Chen clapped. Aunt, well done. Zhong Yi rolled his eyes at her. As for the others from the studio, they did not dare cheer at that. Be it at the studio or anywhere else, only Rao I mean dared to speak with Zhong Yi like this. No one else would dare to do so. Even when they were just joking with Zhong Yi, they still could not best him. It would always be Zhong Yi who trampled on them every single time. Only Rao I mean had it different as she always managed to trample on Zhong Yi. Furthermore, Zhong Yi would usually never talk back to her. Those who understood Zhong Yi's temperament would think that this was clearly something impossible. But those who truly knew him would know that it was all thanks to Rao I mean's support that director Zhong got through the most difficult times, during his debut period. Otherwise, director Zhong would have starved to death long ago and would not have achieved the results that he had today. But of course, if it was someone who knew him even better, they would know that all of those reasons were pure nonsense. The real reason why Zhong Yi did not dare to argue with Rao I mean was that, he could not outfight her. The dishes were served one by one. It was so sumptuous that it left Zhong Yi feeling a pinch in his heart. Zhong Yi said, this meal will be everyone's bonus for this month. Everyone, eat more. When everyone heard that, they threw an uproar. Yi. Yi. Director Zhong is such a miser. Ha ha ha. Zhong Yi said dejectedly, it was just a joke. The bonus will still be given. Come, let's eat. As they were eating, the sound of someone speaking over the microphone could be heard coming from a distance. It was pretty loud too. The event has officially begun. Smash one, get one free car. Everyone is free to participate. Who wants to have a go first? Great, let's have this lad come on up to the stage. Bang. Bang. There was even the sound of the participants trying to smash the car. Jongs were looked out the window. What is going on out there? Ha Chichi said, it's coming from the public square right? I know. Wu Yi said, it's the event that the Korean car brand is organizing. They're carrying out their activities that they had been promoting for the entire day yesterday. It has something to do with a bulletproof car. Little Wang curled her lips. That Lee Anson's advertisement? Tong Fu clearly knew a little about cars. He said, this brand's reputation has always been bad. They're a big car manufacturing factory from Korea that broke into the Chinese market many years ago, but it didn't go by this name back then. At that time, there were problems with their gearboxes, and the cars were all recalled unconditionally within Korea, Japan, and America. However, there was no such recall in China, so the Chinese car buyers could only fork out their own money for the repairs. 
their treatment of our market was very different, so they got criticized really badly. In the end, their sales did poorly and they exited the market altogether. In recent years, the factory has changed names and they've restarted their operations here again. That was probably an attempt to exonerate their company. It was no wonder that they invited Lee Anson to endorse for them. This is a case of birds of a feather flock together. They're all in it together with their spotty track record here in China. Bang. Bang. The sound of the car smashing attempts was incessant. Ha ha ha. Does anyone want to give it a try? We will provide you with the tools. As long as you can smash and break the glass, you will walk away with a free car. John Yi said impatiently, close the windows. It's too noisy. Little Wang immediately went to close the windows. Ha Chi Chi said, come, let's eat. Zhongzhu said, right, don't let those people spoil our mood. Wu Yi raised his glass. Director Zhong, let me offer you another toast. As they ate, the things they talked about were all adult and work-related topics. Chen Chen did not like hearing any of it, so she stood up and said, Aunt, I want to go to the mall. Rao I mean said, I'm not done eating yet. Chen Chen looked at Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi, bring me to the mall. Zhong Yi waved her off. Aya, I'm chatting with them. Chen Chen got angry. Little Wang said with a smile, Little leader, Big Sis will bring you. I just finished eating anyway. Little Ju also stood up. I'll go along too. Chen Chen nodded. Rao I mean instructed, don't let her run around. Zhong Yi added, come back quickly. If she wants to buy anything, just let her buy it. You guys can pay first and then come to her aunt for reimbursement. Little Wang and Little Ju were tickled. Understood. The three of them went out to shop. The rest of the group continued eating and talking. Ten minutes. Half an hour. As they were happily chatting, the sweet room's door was suddenly pushed open. They saw Little Ju run in anxiously and shout, something has happened. Something has happened. Chen Chen smashed someone's car. They won't let her go. When the table of people heard that, they immediately stood up. What? Smashed someone's car? Where? Is she fine? Let's go. We'll go and have a look. How could something have happened so quickly when you three only just stepped out? Instantly, the group of them rushed off. Chapter 1415, Zhong Yi smashes cars. Middle, the public square was not far away, and they only had to cross a long street to get there. Where is it? Right in front. At the Korean car brands event? Yes, that one. Why did Chen Chen go there? Didn't she say she wanted to go shopping at the mall? She insisted on going to watch the buzz. Rao I mean looked solemn. Zhong Yi was getting very anxious. Even though the two of them did not usually show a lot of concern for Chen Chen, they were actually very worried about her. The group of them walked quickly towards the square. From afar, they could already see the advertisement banners and stage erected by the Korean car brand. The floor was covered with a red carpet, and seven or eight black bulletproof cars were parked on it. There were even some golf clubs, wooden baseball bats, and other equipment such as pliers lying around. Clearly, these were the items that were handed out to the audience for them to smash the cars. All around, a large crowd of people were watching as Chen Chen and Little Wang stood in the center of the stage. The event crew and supervisor were also with them. At this moment, a quarrel was occurring on stage. Little Wang had her hands on her hips as she said, how could it be so easily damaged? The male employee pointed at the car door and said, there, take a look for yourself. Little Wang said loudly, you were the ones who allowed the child to smash it first. It was you who let her onto the stage. There were so many other people before her who tried smashing the car, so why are we not allowed to do so when it came to our turn? The male employee said angrily, everyone else tried to smash the windows. Who told you that you could hit the car door? But you guys didn't make it clear to us. Beside them, a female employee said, could we have been any more clearer? Our cars still need to be sold. Now that the paint has been scratched, how are we going to sell it? Little Wang yelled, what are you shouting at us for? Look, you're scaring the child. 
Chen Chen stood there expressionless. That supervisor and the crew nearly fainted. How is that called being scared? She's even calmer than we are, all right. Quite a few people offstage started murmuring. You guys actually didn't make it clear. Besides, you can't blame the child either. The child's frame is so small and she doesn't know how to use her strength, so it's very normal that she would accidentally smash elsewhere on the car. The kid did not do it on purpose anyway, so surely you guys don't have to be so relentless in blaming her, right? Yeah, just forget it. You're a pretty big company. Surely you won't miss this bit of money, right? The supervisor on stage said, it's not a matter of missing the money. This matter has to be cleared up. She should not be messing around like this even if she's a child. Chen Chen calmly said, there's a problem with the quality of your car. The supervisor got annoyed and pointed at Chen Chen, saying, you damaged our car and still dare to make such irresponsible remarks. Little Wang slapped his hand away like a ferocious tiger. Who do you think you're pointing at? A few male employees came over and surrounded her. How dare you lay a hand on us? By this point, things were quite clear. So it turned out that Chen Chen had dragged Little Wang and Little Ju here to have a look at the commotion. She saw that there was an event for smashing cars, so she also joined the line to give it a try. When the organizers saw that it was a child, they just let her go up towards the car with a smile. But who could have thought that a little nine-year-old girl like that could be so strong? She picked up a brick and threw it, although it missed and hit slightly below the window. The paint on the car door was chipped off and exposed a slightly dented metal base underneath. The onlookers were already a little suspicious before this. They knew that this was supposed to be a bulletproof car and the glass seemed pretty solid too, so why did the car door get damaged so easily? In the end, with Chen Chen also saying something like, there's a problem with the quality of your car, the supervisor of the event immediately gave up on arguing and refused to let them leave. The SUP. Irvisor shouted, where are the kid's parents at? Get her parents to come and take her away. Little Wang said angrily, what rights do you have to hold her here? The supervisor said, based on the fact that she had damaged the car. I have the rights to do so. Get her parents here. From a distance away, John Yi and the others rushed over. John Yi said calmly, I am her guardian. Everyone's attention turned to him. Then it blew up. Oh my god. John Yi. It's John Yi. So she's related to John Yi? Foot, this will be interesting to watch. It's face smacking Jong. People were screaming. People were snapping photos. People were taking videos. The crew from the car brand was also stunned. The supervisor said with a sunken expression, Jong Yi? Little Wang finally found her backbone. Director Jong. Jong Yi made his way onto the stage. Chen Chen immediately came over and protested, Jong Yi, their car's quality is not good. Zhong Yi looked at the few members of the event crew. Let's not say anything else first and talk about how you full-grown men have surrounded a little girl and are pointing your fingers at her and shouting. You say that the car door was damaged, that's fine. We'll pay to get it repaired since we're not unreasonable people. But why are you yelling at the child? A male employee shouted, she smashed our car and still made slanderous remarks about it. Even if she's a child, she cannot make up things like that. John Yi looked at him. You still want to continue shouting? The supervisor said in a cold voice, Teacher Zhong, are you here to intentionally make trouble? John Yi was amused. Me? Make trouble? Off stage, the staff of John Yi's studio was angered by the situation. The onlooking crowd was finding the situation to be getting out of hand. They felt that the organizers had gone overboard in handling this little girl by not allowing her to leave. You people were the ones who came up with this, smash one, get one free car, event in the first place. When Zhong Yi came over, he also made it very clear that they would pay however much the damages cost. It was very reasonable, yet why are you people doubling down by arguing with Zhong Yi after having chided the child? What the heck? Teacher Zhong, don't bother with them. They're just trying to ride on your coattails. People in the crowd shouted. Ride on my coattails? Ha ha. That won't be easy. Zhong Yi said, Chen Chen, go down first. 
Chen Chen nodded. The supervisor was holding fast. She can't leave. We have to make things clear. From his words, there didn't seem to be any intention of trivializing the matter. Zhang Yi stared at him. Let the child leave first. I'll clear everything up with you. The supervisor hesitated for a bit. All right then. Zhang Yi turned around and walked up to that car. He lowered his head and had a look, pointing to the part where the paint had been chipped. Was this done by the child? A male employee said, that's right. Zhang Yi asked, did she use a brick to smash it? The supervisor replied, yes. Zhang Yi nodded and said, then my child is right. There's really an issue with the quality of your cars. The supervisor glared at him and said, are you trying to shift the blame? The male employee said, don't you spout bullshit. John Yi said, anyone with a bit of common sense would understand that a little nine-year-old girl could not possibly be that strong. It doesn't matter how strong she might be, or how she could have been blessed with divine strength, that's simply impossible. The people off stage laughed. John Yi pointed to the side. With just a brick, that was all it took to dent the door on your so-called bulletproof car? Then where is your so-called bulletproof protection? He reached out and knocked on it. I can believe that the paint is not bulletproof, but what about the steel plating? The supervisor immediately said, what do you know? This is just the outer layer. The real bulletproof protection is underneath that. If a bullet is fired at it, it will only be able to pass through the outer layer of the car door. There is no way that it could get into the car. There are five levels of protection built into our car doors, and they've gone through professional, military-grade testing. John Yi said, I can't see whether they really have five levels of protection or not, but I know that the first level has been broken by a nine-year-old girl with a brick. The people hooted. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with what teacher Zhang just said. I was also wondering about it earlier. How could it have been damaged with just a smash? Is this car really bulletproof? Although the glass does seem to be pretty sturdy. Yeah, it didn't shatter even after getting hit by more than 20 people. The supervisor was infuriated when he heard that. Teacher Zhong, I'm very sure that you're here to intentionally cause trouble for us. The inner protection linings of the car door cannot be seen without breaking it open. You're deliberately grabbing onto this issue. What do you mean to say? What are your motives? You're purposely trying to defame our brand. All those sets of eyes offstage witnessed for themselves earlier just how strong our bulletproof cars are. Using the many tools that we provided for them here, no one could even manage to break the glass on our bulletproof cars. So how could there be a problem with the quality of our cars? We're one of the top three car manufacturers in Korea. We promise that every one of our bulletproof cars has passed the quality test. A male employee said, you're dirtying our reputation. Another male employee shouted, what are your motives here? Their group of people spoke without a trace of politeness. Seeing this, the surrounding crowd was filled with a sense of disgust. What was this? What kind of a person was John Yi? He was a Peking University professor. A world-class mathematician. Even if you guys don't respect him, you should at least try to be a little polite, right? How could they speak like that? Intentionally causing trouble? Why would he intentionally make trouble? Weren't you the ones who held that little girl back and insisted on seeing her parents? Now that a guardian of hers has come, you're picking on this and that. What kind of people are you? The staff of John Yi's studio were exasperated too. However, what surprised everyone was how John Yi was still as calm as ever. He looked at them indifferently with no signs of emotion. Zhong Yi turned around and tapped on the car window. It's really bulletproof? The supervisor said coldly, give it a try if you don't believe it. Zhong Yi smiled and said, why do I somehow doubt it? An employee nearby said, we have tools here. You can use them as you wish. Pick one. The supervisor sneered. Didn't you say that there was a problem with our quality? All right then, go ahead and smash it. Any car that you successfully smash, will give away a free car to you. They were all waiting to see him make a fool of himself. Johnny also smiled. I'm gonna give it a try then? 
the supervisor stretched out his hand invitingly. Try as you like. Bulletproof glass? Are you joking or what? Not even the world's strongest man could leave a scratch on it. Then, John Yi raised his right hand. There was no baseball bat. There was no brick. With just some concealed power hidden within his palm, he nonchalantly slapped the bulletproof glass. A loud bang reverberated and the entire frame of the car shook. Cracks started appearing on the glass. The supervisor was dumbfounded. The employees were dumbfounded. The crowd was dumbfounded. The staff of Zhong Yi's studio was also dumbfounded. A second later, Zhong Yi raised his hand again and slapped it down once more. Bang! A shockwave traveled through the body of the car. And the glass broke with a crash. In this very moment, no one at the venue could say a thing. Silence reigned in the huge public square. Chapter 1416, John Yi smashes cars. End, one second. Two seconds. Three seconds. The crowd exploded. Heavens. It got smashed. It really hecking got smashed. Damn, what did I just see? What kind of strength is that? What the heck just happened? That can't be possible. More than 20 people have already tried smashing the bulletproof window with a baseball bat, but it didn't even crack. So how did Zhong Yi manage to smash it in just two hits? The key here was that he smashed it with his hand. Yes, oh my god. He used his hand to smash it. That was too godly. It was too impressive. Zhong Yi is invincible. Teacher Zhong is amazing. Those two strikes of his palm were so hecking cool. Everyone at the venue was exclaiming in shock. Chen Chen shouted, Zhong Yi. Nice one. Zhong Yi. Well done. Ha Chichi was dumbfounded. Zhongs were stared, his jaw dropping. Little Wang, Little Ju, and the rest of the others were also stunned. How was that possible? Just how was that even possible? They knew that director Zhong was very capable at fighting. Whatever the case, Zhong Yi was never at a disadvantage whenever there was a fist fight. But to say how good he was at it, they really did not have an idea. Moreover, this was no longer a hecking matter of whether he was capable at fighting. This was bulletproof glass they were talking about. Was this something that a human could break with a smash? And he even did it with his bare hands? In their understanding of this world, this was not something that a human being could achieve. It was too shocking. It was really too frightening. More importantly, Zhong Yi even turned around to look at the organizer's supervisor and crew after smashing the bulletproof glass. You are the ones who asked me to try it. The supervisor was speechless Zhong Yi said innocently, see, I knew there was a problem with the quality of your cars. The supervisor was still speechless. Zhong Yi pointed. Does this count as successfully smashing the glass? The supervisor couldn't speak. Zhong Yi said, smash one, get one car free. Does that mean I get to drive one away now? The supervisor was tongue-tied. They nearly pissed their pants. They were really shocked at what had happened. At this moment, the crew members nearly couldn't stand straight. Their knees buckled, and they were screaming in their heads, heck. Are you hecking human? A male employee said, what the hell just happened? A female employee said, that's bulletproof glass. The supervisor was regretting it so much that his intestines turned green. He thought to himself, have I got nothing better to do than to ride on his coattails? Even before it made any impact, our brand's reputation has already gone down the drain. He knew in his heart of hearts that this was no longer an issue of giving away a car for free. This was a matter related to the brand's image and the quality of their cars. Their high-end flagship bulletproof car had been damaged by a nine-year-old girl, then got its glass smashed by a celebrity. W wasn't he that a great big joke? If this got out, they'd become the butt of all jokes forever. The industry insiders would all laugh at this incident for a lifetime. The people were in an uproar. Give away the car. Give away the car. Give away the car. Give away the car. They were unprepared for this. There was totally no plan to give one away at all. The supervisor knew that the situation was becoming bad. 
seeing the people around recording videos and taking pictures, and seeing how more and more people had gathered around and blocked off the square, he grit his teeth and made a decision on the spot. After looking around for a while, he found the keys to a brand new car and handed it over to Zhong Yi reluctantly. Zhong Yi smiled and took it from him. Then he threw it to Little Wang and said, drive it away later. Little Wang said happily and excitedly, got it. The supervisor immediately tried to remedy the situation. He went over and pretended to check on the broken glass before looking like he understood something. Everyone, that was an accident just now. I had a look and deduced that it wasn't a problem with the quality of our cars. You can rest assured. It was because the glass was not entirely new and had gone through a lot of stress testing before this. We had carried out a hardness test on the glass before the car left the factory, and our employees also did a series of tests and hammer strikes on it when it arrived at our showroom. Then, when we brought the same car over for the event today, it was pounded and hammered on by a lot of people as well. Although this is bulletproof glass, there are still limitations to it. For example, if it gets hit too many times in the same spot, the hardness of the glass will get degraded slowly. This is all very normal. The crowd whispered. That's not really bulletproof glass, is it? What kind of bulletproof protection is this? This is too face smacking. I'm already feeling sorry for them. Isn't this explanation a bit far-fetched? Teacher Jong is so skinny, yet he can still smash the glass into pieces. There must be something wrong with the quality of this car. And you're claiming it to be a bulletproof car? I'd have to swerve to avoid a brick that's being thrown at me. This explanation makes sense though. So it was because the bulletproof glass had exceeded its limitations. Zhong Yi couldn't have possibly smashed it with his bare hands. Just how much strength would that have required? That's true. Some people complained. Some people were skeptical. The supervisor quickly explained, it was just a coincidence. The bulletproof glass was not new and had been struck several hundreds of times by dozens or even hundreds of people. There were already cracks in it, it just didn't appear on the surface. When teacher Zhong Yi made his attempt, it coincided nicely as he struck the spot where cracks had started appearing. That was what resulted in the glass breaking and it's not a matter of the quality. However, it doesn't matter. Since we said that we'll give away a free car if anyone successfully smashed the glass, we will fulfill our promise. If anyone still has any doubts, we'll bring out a brand new car that hasn't gone through any smashing attempts. We'll show everyone how strong bulletproof glass is when it isn't damaged. Absolutely no one will be able to break it. An employee drove a new car over. The supervisor laughed and said, look, this is a brand new car, so everyone can give it a try and attempt to smash the window. It was just a coincidence that someone managed to catch a break. Actually, whoever tried to smash the glass just now would have shattered it. Our brand name is a guarantee. Please believe in our brand and believe in teacher Lee Anson's endorsement. This newly brought in bulletproof car for the event won't have any issues. Who wants to give it a try? Someone walked forward. It was a woman. Her name was Ario I mean. Someone in the crowd recognized her. Ah. What an icy beauty. She's John Yee's agent. I know her too. I've seen her on television before. Harchichi was taken aback. Zhongzhu was startled too. No one expected that Zhong Yi's landlord come agent would actually step forward. Tong Fu said, Director Zhong, Big Sis Rao, she's? But Zhong Yi just laughed. That woman is being greedy again. Wu Yi did not understand what he meant. Ah? What do you mean by greedy? When the supervisor saw this, he smiled. All right, a volunteer has stepped forward. Does this pretty lady want to give it a try? Good, you can experience it for yourself. There are some tools over there, a hammer, baseball bat, anything you want. You can also try as many times as you want, but it doesn't matter how many times you try to hit it. Just don't assume that you have a chance of breaking it. This is a brand new bulletproof car that we just brought out, so it's different from before. Please experience all that you want regarding how tough our latest bulletproof glass is. Oh, by the way, please be careful and don't hurt yourself. 
If you do, we're not going to be, Rao I mean had already walked up beside the car with an indifferent look. A lot of people were dumbfounded for a while. What was the meaning of this? Where are the items? Aren't you going to take a baseball bat or something? Then they saw Rao I mean gently raise her hand before striking it down on the passenger side window. With a crash, it sounded like the earth and mountains were shaking. The entire car even looked like it was going to be flipped over by a huge force, with the tires on her side almost lifting off the ground. The palm strike landed. One strike. Just one strike. The bulletproof glass shattered. Holy heck. Holy shit. My god. The crowd was shocked. The staff of Zhong Yi Studio were shocked. No one dared to believe their eyes. It was the same posture as John Yee's. It was the same move as John Yee's. The only difference was the number of strikes. The bulletproof glass had similarly shattered. The brand's employees were all stunned on the spot. The organizer's supervisor who was still boasting about the bulletproof car over the microphone suddenly dropped it onto the ground with a thud and a loud, piercing feedback. He slumped to the ground as though his soul had flown out of his body. Staring blankly at the broken bulletproof glass that Zhong Yi's agent had shattered with a strike. Then he looked at the broken glass Zhong Yi had just shattered and thought to himself, Heck your sister. At this moment in time, his face was strewn in tears. Mother Hecker. Is this a group of hecking animals or something? Chapter 1417, I want to smash 10 more cars. The venue blew up. Many people screamed. Ah. Uh. That was so cool. My eyes have been blinded. A heroine. She's a heroine. That was so amazing. Didn't they just change it to new bulletproof glass? What kind of a person is that? An animal. A pure beast. A teacher Jong and her human? Heck, are these two people made of metal? And that little girl from earlier too, did you guys see the strength that she threw the brick with? How is that the strength of a nine-year-old girl? My child who's already 14 years old does not have that much strength. And he's a boy too. This family is here to slap faces. I'm genuflecting. Harchichi was also stunned. She wrenched her head to the side. Director Jong. Jong's was legs turned to rubber. Director Jong, this, this, big sis reo, she. Little Wang and Little Ju exclaimed, Big Sis Rao is so fearsome. They already couldn't accept the fact that Zhong Yi had shattered the bulletproof glass with just two palm strikes. But now, the usually carefree and sharp-tongued Rao I mean had shattered the bulletproof glass with her palm too. And she only had to strike it once. They could only be described as frightened at the present moment. What was going on? What was with this situation? Are they even earthlings? Only Chen Chen was not the least bit surprised. She shouted triumphantly, Aunt. Another one. Smash another car. Rao I mean glanced at the slumped over supervisor. This is a smash one, get one car free event. So where's my free car? The supervisor looked over at her blankly and subconsciously reached out to hand the keys of a brand new car to her. The other employees also stared at Rao I mean like they had just seen a god. But at the next moment, they nearly vomited blood. They saw Rao I mean put the keys away with a satisfied look, then hold out her hand and declare audaciously, another one. I want to smash ten more cars. Smash ten more cars, ten more, ten, the supervisor who was just about to stand up buckled again and slumped back to the ground with a plop. Your sister. You still want to smash more cars? You can still smash more of them. Are you getting addicted to this? We won't have enough cars left for you to smash. The expressions on the employees' faces changed. We can't do this anymore. No more smashing. Right, each person is only entitled to winning one car. We have a written rule for that. Hearing that, Ario I mean felt that it was rather regrettable. She went, oh, before casually walking off the stage. The supervisor and the crew all heaved sighs of relief. At this moment, a woman walked over from a short distance away. Yang Xu had arrived. Senior bro. Zhong Yi turned around and was very happy to see her. Why did you just get here? 
Yang Xu complained, there was a traffic jam on the way here. When I got to the restaurant, all of you had already left. The waiter said that you were making your way here to the public square. What's going on? Zhong Yi acknowledged, oh, there's a car smashing event. It's a smash one, get one free car event. Yang Xu's eyes lit up. Did you smash one already? Zhong Yi smiled and said, old Ario and I both successfully smashed a car each. Yang Xu jumped up eagerly. Then I'll give it a try too. She wasn't doing it for the money, and even more so, not for the car. She was purely thinking of this as a challenge. This junior sis of Zhong Yi's never had anything in her mind except martial arts. When the crowd saw this, they were all tickled pink. It's her. Zhong Yi's bodyguard. That's right, that's right. Zhong Yi's bodyguard is here. Pfft. Do they need to be so relentless? Did they all come here for a meeting? Upon hearing that, the supervisor and event crew were scared out of their wits. In this moment, they gave up. What? Bodyguard? Heck your third uncle's grandma. If John Yi and his agent were like that, what would his bodyguard be like? Are you trying to kill us? In the blink of an eye, the supervisor somehow found the strength to rush over to the microphone that he had dropped earlier by crawling and rolling. He grabbed it and announced loudly, the event has ended. I hereby announce that the smash one, get one free car event has ended. It won't be going on any further. No more smashing. No more smashing. The laughter and booing from the crowd mixed together. Ye. 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 They've admitted defeat. Ha 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 ha. I'm laughing my ass off. But Yang Xu was unhappy to hear that. I haven't even tried to smash a car yet. The supervisor wiped away his sweat. No more attempts, the event has ended. Yang Xu said unwillingly, I don't want your car. I just want to attempt it. The supervisor almost cried. Sister. My dear sister. Can the three of you please not mess with us? John Yi looked at him. It's ended? The supervisor said, right, right, the event is over. John Yi pointed at the car from earlier. Then about when my kid damaged your car door? How much do we have to pay you? The supervisor said tearfully, you don't have to compensate us. There's no need for that. This matter was not handled by us properly. We cannot blame the child for it. Don't blame the child. Ario I mean stared at him. Then how did you speak to my child just now? The supervisor quickly said to Chen Chen, sorry, I'm sorry. Uncle's tone earlier was not right. Let me apologize to you. See, our event has ended and there's nothing left to play with around here. Oh yes, there's also another car show at the mall. Why don't you ask your guardian to take you there to have a look? Chen Chen said evenly, there's nothing fun to play with in there. You may be having fun. But we're not having any fun at all. We're really hecking pissing our pants. The supervisor kept on apologizing and begging until he finally managed to convince them to leave. But at heart, he knew that a storm was just starting to brew. The crowd began to act. Phone calls. Weibo. The news immediately started spreading. Over there. The two new cars placed before them were both seven-seater bulletproof cars. John Yi laughed and said, looked at how this has turned out. We came out for lunch, but we somehow earned ourselves two cars. What good timing. Our studio needs cars right now, right? We don't have to buy them anymore. Old Ha, Old Swa, take a car each. Consider it your exclusive rides from me. You may drive it home for your private use too. However, the studio staff were still caught in a state of shock. Ha Chichi quickly said, how did you do it? Zhong Yi said amusingly, actually, old Ario and I are both martial arts masters. Do you believe that? Yi. TSK. Everyone's lips curled when they heard that. Of course they wouldn't believe it. In their minds, it must have been some kind of a strategy or technique. Zhong Yi threw up his hands helplessly. All right, that ends the conversation. Let's go, get into the cars. Everyone was talking about what had just happened as they got in the cars. 
only Yang Xu stayed still. She stood in front of the car, occasionally tapping on the glass, occasionally knocking on the car door. Zhong Yi was startled. What are you doing? Their old Ha and Olds was cars, so stop you think about smashing them. But he then smiled. All right, stop looking at them. You can't smash them. Yang Xu remained unconvinced. Why can't I smash it? Zhong Yi laughed and said, that is bulletproof glass. Yang Xu said stubbornly, but I can still give it a try. Raoi mean piped up, you can't do it. Yang Xu's face flushed red then white. If it were only her senior brother who said that, it would have been fine. But even Grandmaster Rao thought the same. That meant she definitely couldn't smash it. Thinking about it made her somewhat disgruntled. But with that, she was also able to sense the difference between her and both Zhong Yi and Rao I mean to be too big. Chapter 1418, National Buzz Later That Afternoon The news had spread far and wide. At Central TV. What? Zhong Yi smashed a car? The bulletproof glass got shattered? Holy shit! Hurry, hurry, line this up for the news report. At an entertainment company. What did you say? Zhong Yi went there to cause trouble? How is that possible? Face smacking Zhong has made another move? Li Anson's team. Holy heck! Zhong Yi! That damned hooligan! He did it on purpose. It was deliberate. He's forcing us into a corner. Bastard. He's so awful. This is bad news. It's terrible this time. The news of Lee Anson's endorsed car brand having its bulletproof window smashed overwhelmed the media. On Weibo, the forums, newspapers, and television, it was getting reported everywhere. Some of them even carried videos and pictures of the scene. The public burst into an uproar. The netizens were crazily happy. I knew it. I knew it. John Yi still made a move in the end. Ha 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 ha, I should have known that this fellow couldn't have such a good temper. Bulletproof glass? How did he manage to smash it? Who knows? He must have resorted to some kind of trickery. Yeah, that's not glass that can be broken with brute strength alone. Who's that pretty lady? That's John Yi's agent. Her name is Ario I mean. She's so cool. My goddess. Are they all animals? How did they shatter bulletproof glass with their bare hands? Teacher Jong is going to be on fire again. Who said that face smacking Jong has toned down just because he's going to be a father? Who said that? Stand forward now. I guarantee I won't beat you to death. Isn't he still the same as before? Ha ha ha, he's going to be like this all his life. This fellow's fearless attitude has got nothing at all to do with him becoming a father. His wickedness is ingrained in his soul. He won't change even if he has ten children. It's another face smacking. They've all been smacked swollen and bruised. This car brand is really too hecking unlucky. Of all people, why did they have to get Lee Anson to endorse them? Idiots. The quality of this car is really not that good either. Face smacking Jong has brought smacking faces to a whole new level. I just love seeing teacher Jong smack faces. The clamor was still growing. Such heated discussions usually wouldn't die down so quickly after blowing up. The event was too shocking, because no one had ever encountered something like this before. It was very fresh to them. If you were to say that Zhong Yi had gone to someone's store and destroyed the place, everyone could imagine something like that. If you were to say that Zhong Yi had slashed someone's tires, everyone could also imagine that. But to shatter the bulletproof glass window of someone's car when that someone was hyping up their smash one, get one free car event with amazing claims? What normal person could do something like that? What normal person would even think of something like that? Only Zhong Yi. Only someone like him who didn't play his cards logically would do something like that. From the public. To the industry insiders. As well as the media. And even among Zhong Yi's family and friends. Each and every one of them who saw the news was shocked. Soon, the car company issued an emergency PR announcement to clarify the issue. Their car's quality was not an issue. 
After the incident took place, they did an emergency inspection and found that their employees had deployed the wrong vehicle model for the event. The few cars that they brought over were not their flagship bulletproof cars, but an almost identical model of it, thus causing the misunderstanding. So it was because they had brought over the wrong cars. But of course. How could Face Smacking Jong have that kind of strength? That's still very strong. Two strikes of the palm were all he needed to shatter an ordinary pane of tempered glass? What normal person could do that? Unless they have extraordinary strength. Did they really bring the wrong vehicle model? Why am I not at all convinced? Right, didn't they also get the other people to use baseball bats to smash the glass before that? If it was ordinary tempered glass, it would have shattered in just one hit. Even if not, two hits would suffice, wouldn't it? Who knows if they're telling the truth. This car company has a previous track record of cheating consumers in China. They've got a spotty history, so I wouldn't take their word for it. Everyone discussed and analyzed the matter for the entire day and could only come to two conclusions. The first was that there was definitely something wrong with the quality of the glass on the vehicles provided by the car brand. Otherwise, it would be impossible for Zhong Yi and his agent to smash it. The second reason was that Zhong Yi had used some trick to shatter the bulletproof glass. However, no one knew what trick it was and none of them could come up with a suitable conclusion even after studying it for a long time. China. Beijing. The Korean car brand's branch office. Everyone in the company was worried. They were so worried that their faces had turned green. At this moment, the Korean head office's staff arrived in a hurry. When they found the person in charge of this event, they started scolding him. What's going on with you? Sorry, President Kim. Do you know how greatly this matter has affected us? Do you know how much the company stands to lose as a result of this? We're likely to lose the entire Chinese market. But I, you what? What excuse can you still have? You can't even handle a simple event like this and mixed up the regular model for the bulletproof one. What the hell is wrong with you? That supervisor burst into tears. But I didn't get it wrong. The people from the head office were taken aback. What do you mean? The supervisor immediately brought them over to the garage where the two smashed cars had been shipped back to. The head office's staff went up to have a look. The interior. The outer shape of the car. The thickness of the glass windows. The regular model and the bulletproof model were different from each other. They were stunned. This, isn't this the latest bulletproof car model? The supervisor said, yes, we only said that we brought in the wrong car model as an emergency PR. President Kim was stunned as he pointed at the bulletproof glass. Are you saying that those two really managed to shatter our bulletproof glass? The supervisor said, yes, they really managed to do it. President Kim cursed like a sailor in Korean. How did they do it? Just how the heck did they manage to do it? The outside world was in an uproar. At this moment, only the Chinese martial arts world was in a state of calm. Shaolin Monastery. Martial uncle, did you watch the video yet? I've seen it already. Zhong Yi is, yes, he has almost fully mastered the use of his concealed power. Then he's not far from becoming a grand, I'm afraid he's almost there. How much longer? That's not a realm I can fathom. If he's fast, then two or three years. If he's slow, maybe eight or nine years. Who can say for sure? Many people in the Chinese martial arts world had seen the video as well. The small sects. The large sects. The non-affiliates. All of them knew better. Seeing the commoners on the internet guessing what kinds of methods Zhong Yi had used, and guessing whether there was a problem with the quality of the glass, they could only shake their heads in resignation. From the strength he applied through his hands, the shaking of the car, and many other details, they could all see that it really was bulletproof glass. Although it might not meet military standards, the lowest grade of bulletproof glass was more than enough. This had nothing to do with the glass. It was a problem with the people. This car company was really unlucky. In the world today, there were no more than eight people who could shatter bulletproof glass with their bare hands, but Ario I mean and Zhong Yi were two of them. Chapter 1419, Li Anson gets sent packing as well. The next day. On Monday morning, Zhong Yi went to work. 
Good morning, Director Zhong. You were on fire again yesterday. Yeah, everyone in the nation is talking about you. The headlines, the front page, you're on all of them. Lee Anson is out of luck this time. That car brand is even unluckier. They've descended into a brand crisis this time. Right, everyone's just waiting to see the outcome. Director Zhong, how did you and Big Sis Ario shatter the glass? Yeah, tell us how you did it. There's a lot of people online guessing as well. The atmosphere in the studio was very cheerful. Every employee who worked here liked this atmosphere very much and felt a special sense of belonging to the place. Very few employees would resign or jump to a job elsewhere, and there was a reason for that. In any other celebrity studio or entertainment agency, where would they get the chance to witness such entertainment and amusement happening before them every other day? The salary was good, and the work was simple. If they were to mention to anyone outside that they were an employee at Zhong Yi Studio, their industry peers and friends would double take. Zhong Yi chatted with them for quite a while. Then Ha Chichi came over. Director Zhong. Zhong Yi looked at her and said with a smile, Old Ha, what's the matter? Ha Chichi was nervous. Um, there's something. Zhong Yi asked, What is it? Spit it out. Ha Chichi hesitated for a while, not knowing whether to laugh or cry. She said, When I arrived at work this morning and parked my car downstairs, little Yang was already there waiting for me. She didn't say anything, just stared at my car, the bulletproof car that you gave to Old Swar and me. The way she looked at it made my hair curl. I was really terrified. Zhong Yi said, That happened? Zhong Zhuo had also just arrived at work. He was looking somewhat flustered. Zhong Yi looked at him. What's the matter, Old Zhuo? Ayo, Director Zhong, I was looking for you. Zhong Zhuo said in a terrified manner, I was so scared just now. I just parked my car downstairs and happened to receive a call, so I answered it in the car. Five minutes into the call, a silhouette appeared outside tapping on my window and touching it. I thought that someone was trying to steal the car, but the moment I stepped out of the car, I saw little Yang. I asked her what she was doing, but she didn't say anything at all. It was as though she was possessed. John Yi was speechless. This junior sister of his. She was too troublesome. John Yi suddenly said, Okay, I know what to do. I'll criticize her. He immediately called Yang Shu and asked her to come upstairs. What were you doing downstairs? Yang Shu pouted. Nothing. Zhong Yi said with a straight face, don't keep eyeing and circling old Ha and old Zwa's cars like that. You'll scare them. Yang Shu nodded. Zhong Yi said, can you keep that in mind? Yang Shu said, I heard you, senior bro. All right then, that's the right attitude. Only then did Zhong Yi break into a smile. When Yang Shu went off, Zhong Yi had Ha Chichi and Zhong Zwa come over. Okay, it's done. I've spoken to little Yang, so you don't have to worry anymore. My words still hold some weight with her. Ha Chichi smiled and said, I was really afraid that she would smash my car. Zhong Yi laughed out loud. She won't. Little Yang might be a little rash, but, as he was speaking, a loud crash came from downstairs. It sounded like someone had punched something. After that, a car alarm went off. This was a sound that everyone was very familiar with. It was John Yi's BMW X5's alarm. John Yi's face changed immediately and he quickly opened the window. Everyone also looked out of the window in astonishment. They saw Yang Shu holding her fist in pain as she stood beside the BMW. John Yi roared, Yang Shu. Get up here right now. Two minutes later, Yang Shu was upstairs. John Yi pelted her with scolding. Are you trying to drive me to my grave? Didn't I tell you to stay away from old Ha and Olds was cars? Yang Shu said calmly, I didn't touch their cars. Zhong Yi nearly vomited blood. You're not supposed to touch my car either. Everyone was doubling over in laughter. Director Zhong's BMW was also a bulletproof car. Yang Shu muttered, I was just trying out something. Zhong Yi said, trying out what? I pay for your meals, I gave you a place to stay, and you still smashed my car? Do you have a death wish? Why didn't you go and smash someone else's car? 
Yang Xu said, I'd have to compensate them if I smashed their cars. Zhong Yi nearly fainted from anger. So it wouldn't cost anything if you smashed my car. This junior sis of his that he didn't ask for, why didn't she have a lick of common sense? Since Zhong Yi had nothing to do, he continued scolding Yang Xu for the entire morning and even punished her by making her do the horse stance in the office. In the end, someone went to tell Ario I mean about it and she couldn't stand to watch it any longer, so she came over and rescued her. Otherwise, who knew how long Zhong Yi would have punished her for? In the outside world. The matter finally reached a conclusion. And this outcome ignited yet another huge ruckus. The SARFT got involved. The AXIC-1 got involved. The China Consumers Association too got involved. The various organizations opened a full investigation to take action against the Korean car brand for their quality problems, false advertising, false marketing, and a series of other issues. That afternoon. The television commercials. The bus stop ads. The subway ads. All of Lee Anson's endorsement advertisements had been halted and taken down. At this point, Lee Anson had only returned to the Chinese market via the advertisement channel for two days before he got sent packing to where he came, from by John Yi. Furthermore, due to the car brand's issues, Lee Anson's image was also implicated. With this slap by John Yi, it was estimated that Lee Anson would not be able to return to the Chinese market again within the next few years. At the car brand's company. Heck! The Chinese market is too shady. This place is way too hostile. A conspiracy, this is all a hecking conspiracy. Lee Anson's team. Did they really take it down? How did it turn out like this? How ruthless. This Zhong Yi is too ruthless. Are we really unable to get into the Chinese market now? I'm so angry that I could cry. How can there be a bastard like him around? On Weibo. The Chinese netizens were delighted. How satisfying. This car brand cheated our Chinese consumers in the past. Right. Did they think that we wouldn't know who they are by taking on a new identity? Li Anson is so unlucky. Since he dared to hit a Chinese fan back then, he should have been mentally prepared that he would get chased away. This is two face smacking. Yeah, the ads had only rolled out for two days, but it got taken down by face smacking Zhong almost immediately. Very soon, the news also spread to Japan and Korea. The Korean media suddenly blew up with a lot of scolding and cursing. A Korean brand gets blocked in China. Zhong Yi stirs up trouble yet again. Zhong Yi smashes a bulletproof car with his bare hands. Zhong Yi, an inexorable hooligan. When the Korean and Japanese celebrities saw Li Anson's advertisements rolling out in China with impunity, they all had the urge to enter the Chinese market again. But when the news came out, they all gasped as though a bucket of ice water had been poured on their heads. John Yi. It's John Yi again. Why is he always picking so many fights? Why is he always able to stir up trouble? Park Jae Sang had been sent packing. Kim Ji Chan had been sent packing. Kimura Kozuyo had been sent packing. And now, Lee Anson has also been sent packing. Was there anything left to play for in this case? And what made the Japanese and Koreans even more furious that night was when the Asian Celebrity Rankings Index got updated, John Yi's Asian popularity was still steadily increasing. Chapter 1420, Time for the Lottery. The next day. At Old Wu's parents' house. In the courtyard, the sun was shining brightly today. When Zhong Yi and Wu Zichin came over, Li Qingqing pulled her daughter aside to chat while Wu Changhe played Go with Zhong Yi. Sure enough, the two men started quarreling again. Dad, why are you always taking back your moves? I'm trying to let you know about the other possible moves that can be made in this game. Ayo, come off it already. How can you say that? You're putting it like I'm playing you seriously. I'm already giving you have a four stone handicap, and you're still not playing seriously. You're speaking like I can't beat you if I gave you a four stone handicap as well. Haha, ha, you really can't beat me. Heh, don't you dare me. Give it a try then. I think it's better if I gave you a 5 stone handicap. No need for that. I'll give you a 10 stone handicap. I'll give you 20. I'll give you 30. 
I'll give you fifty. I'll give you a hundred. They stopped playing and placed stones down senselessly as they tried to outboast each other. Li Qingqing and Wu Zixing were used to this. They laughed and chatted close by as though nothing was happening, not bothered by what was going on between the two of them. When they got tired of it, the two men finally stopped arguing. Li Qingqing laughed and said, Little Yi, do you really have such great strength? Zhong Yi said happily, Of course. With my physique and body, can't you tell? Wu Chang her mocked, He, it really doesn't show at all. Li Qingqing asked, But that's bulletproof glass. Even if they said that they took the wrong car, that's still tempered glass, isn't it? How could it be shattered with a smash just like that? Zhong Yi laughed and said, Aren't you underestimating me? To put it into context, is a steel plate thick? But I can put a dent in it with a strike of my palm all the same. It's imbued with martial arts, and not even 30 to 50 people could get close to me. Back then, when there was conflict in the martial arts community, a dozen or so of the large sects were trying to find trouble with me. This bro went knocking on their doors one by one and sent them packing. I smashed their sect's plaques and beat up their sect leaders, and they ended up avoiding me. They did not even dare make a sound. When I learned that the Huashan sect's plaque was made of some pretty solid wood, I took it and made it into beaded bracelets and sold them. They got so angry about it, yet there was nothing they could do to me. How strong would I have to be to do that? So let's not mention some car's glass window. Martial arts community? Large sects? Smashing plaques? Making them into beaded bracelets? How good are you at bragging? You might as well say that you've ascended into the heavens. Wu Chang her smirked at the words, while Li Qingqing covered her mouth in laughter. Since Zhong Yi had put it to them jokingly, they listened and took it in jest. However, unbeknownst to them, everything that Zhong Yi had just said was the truth. Noon. After lunch, Wu Chang her went out to play Go. Li Qingqing insisted on having Wu Zixing rest for a while, so she dragged her back to the house to take a nap. This left Zhong Yi alone with nothing to do, so he went back into the west wing to lie down. He took out his cell phone and started browsing online for news related to himself. The current situation was a stalemate. Zhong Yi could not get into the Japanese and Korean markets, while their artists were becoming anxious with all their worries. Zhong Yi had already sent four of them packing back to their countries. At a time like this, it wasn't likely that anyone would want to be the next person to stick their necks out. They were all hesitating and waiting to see how things would develop. On the other hand, Zhong Yi was still thriving. Although he was scolded badly and his reputation was tarnished, his popularity on the Asian celebrity rankings was still rising steadily. His days were indeed quite beautiful. However, Zhong Yi was not satisfied with such a situation. This was not a long term plan. He was going to become a father soon, so his motivation and enthusiasm had increased. He wanted to try to compete for the Asian S list rankings no matter what. Thus, he set himself a goal. Before his child was born, he would have to become an Asian heavenly king at the least and make it to the top of the Asian stage before setting his eyes on the world stage. Otherwise, everything else would be for naught. But where could he make a breach? How could he fend off the restrictions that were set upon him by the Japanese and Koreans? How could he quickly increase his popularity in Asia? He thought about Zhong Yuanqi, Xu Mai Lan, and the others who were at the top of the Chinese entertainment circle with him. All of them were also heavenly kings and queens in Asia, with the only exception being Zhong Yi. Although the influence of Korea's entertainment industry was still the greatest in Asia, with many of their variety shows, dramas, and movies easily breaking into the Chinese market and earning buckets of money while winning over many fans at the same time. China's own movies, TV dramas, and variety shows found it harder to get into the Japanese and Korean markets. However, with the Chinese population already there and the market so big, those who could reach the top of the Chinese entertainment industry were basically also at the top of the Asian entertainment industry. At least, they didn't have much of a problem becoming an Asian S-lister. So why was Zhong Yi the exception? This was because the path he walked was different from the other six heavenly kings and queens. They were all popular, good-looking, idolized, starred in films, TV shows, or sang. 
All of them were mainstream idols, while Zhong Yi had never been associated with the mainstream, nor an idol, for that matter. This was the essential difference, so regardless of whether it was Zhong Yuanqi or Xu Mailan, their paths were not something that Zhong Yi could copy. If he wanted to reach the top in Asia? Then he would have to find his own way. A path that was different from everyone else's. After pondering for half an hour. And drinking three cups of strong tea. Zhong Yi still did not come up with any constructive thoughts, so he decided to take a look at the lottery system. With so many reputation points accumulated, it was time to use it again. Otherwise, all the points would all be sitting in there for nothing. He opened up the game rings interface. And tapped on the merchant shop. He activated the lucky halo, upgraded. And then opened up the lottery drawer and placed in the additional stakes. He did a series of manipulations with great familiarity. This time, he still chose to stick with the lottery draw, too. The items from the medium-sized treasure chests were good and of a higher level as well, although they were more expensive to get. Each attempt cost 10 million reputation points, with every additional stake requiring another 10 million as well. However, what Zhong Yi did not lack was reputation points. He still had not used many of the reputation points he had earned this year. While he continued gaining more as his popularity grew, with an endless amount of reputation points being added with each passing day. That was to say, as long as he stayed in the entertainment industry, his reputation points would never stop growing. Therefore, Zhong Yi was extremely generous in spending it this time. He immediately placed nine additional stakes for his first attempt, totaling ten stakes altogether. The sum of the reputation points required was 100 million and this did not even include the high consumption rate per second by the lucky halo, upgraded. The lottery draw began. The slot machine was activated. One cycle. Three cycles. Five cycles. Ding. The prize was dispensed. John Yi immediately looked at it in anticipation. The familiar treasure chest, medium, was lying there in the game ring's inventory. He carefully took it out and opened it to look inside. He heaved a sigh of relief when he learned that it wasn't empty. All those reputation points didn't go to waste. It was all experience books inside the treasure chests. They were the higher tier experience books. Drawing skill experience book, times 10, increases the drawing skill experience of the player. Every one of these types of higher tier skill experience books from Lottery Draw, too was equivalent to a hundred of the same skill experience books that were dispensed through Lottery Draw, 1. Moreover, Zhong Yi had yet to discover any upper limit to them and could eat them endlessly. This was the reason why he preferred playing in the Lottery Draw, 2. Sometimes, if he played the Lottery Draw, 1, too many times, the skills or stats attained would reach a cap and any more of the skills or stats category items would go to waste if he won more of them. Meanwhile, the higher tier experience books did not have such a problem. So, with the current circumstances where many of Zhong Yi's attributes and skills were already at the max level, such as his strength, agility, calligraphy, mathematics, and Go, it was obvious that Lottery Draw, too, was the more suitable option to play. This was because he could still continue increasing his skill experience even after he reached the cap that the lower tier books could not surpass. Drawing? All right then, it was always better to have another skill set after all. Zhong Yi did not pay much attention to it and continued playing the lottery. The slot machine started moving again. It spun and spun. And spun and spun. He deliberately turned his head away and did not look. This was because he realized that it would not affect the results whether he looked at it or not, so he might as well not look and wonder. He heard a ding and the prize was dispensed. It was another 10 medium-sized treasure chests. But when he saw what was in it, Zhong Yi was taken aback. Japanese language skill experience book, times 10, increases the player's Japanese language skill. Japanese language? Drawing? Something dawned on Zhong Yi. Perhaps heaven is implying something to me? Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.